Hello? Hello! Um, Twitch is... <sighs> they added a new thing, and so I don't know if I like it. They changed, um... They changed the how the ad manager works, and I don't like it. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, what my ad manager is trying to do is it's trying to run an ad every 40 minutes, which I don't like. Why is it? I don't know why it's doing that. It's... I, yeah, I don't understand. Thank you for the head fat bail. It's... it's weird. I go in the settings. It's... I want to... I want to run three minutes of ads every hour. But how they've done it is they're going to run a two-minute ad break every 40 minutes, and that's kind of... I don't know, I don't... That's kind of stinky. Why do they do that? And I don't know how to change this. I think it's kind of stupid. Ah! Ah! I f okay, I fix, I fix. Okay, hold on. Three minutes every 60. Yes, save changes. Oh my god, screw you. Automatic ad length and frequency. You're so stupid. Okay. Okay, that's fixed. That is fixed. Hopefully. I don't know. Ad manager might try to run another ad in like 30 minutes, but we'll see. Someone is trying to call me. I'm going to ignore that phone call. But yes, how are you doing today, Bale? It's been a while. Has life been busy for you? God, okay, we were in the pawn shop last I remember. You're dying? Oh no, are you sick? I'm gonna play from that table. I was in the hospital last week and got out. Oh no, I hope you're doing better than you were. I mean, considering you're dying right now. But I hope you're doing better than you were last week. Oh, <laughs> thank you for the boop. You caught cooties on the hospital? Damn. It's been so long since I've heard the term cooties. I always have to Google it to remind myself what it means. Okay, well, they have different meanings. Cooties as in COVID. Ah. Damn. Yeah, lucky for me, when I caught it, I was just, I had to just stay home. Um, I probably should have slept more than I did, but like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I refused. Oh, thank you for the follow, Aphomet. But yeah, it was such a strange time having COVID. It was just the concept of being quarantined from like your entire family is so weird. Like two weeks. Yeah, ar around two weeks, right? I think around like two weeks, I could not leave my room. <laughs> my mom left my dinner on a chair outside my door. <laughs> but yeah, it must have been um, must have been bad if you had to go to the hospital for that. Oh no, you caught it while in the hospital. Okay. Never mind. So you went to the hospital for something else and you caught it there. Yeah, it's not um I mean it's different for everyone, but I mostly just had like I think like a fever and like really lethargic. Was the meds invented yet when you caught it? I don't know. They made meds for that? If they it, then I don't know 
They must have not been... What was it? I caught it... I think it was last year was when I got COVID last year. But yeah, I wasn't like... I don't know. I didn't feel super terrible, so it was... I think I mostly just needed sleep. The antivirals are destroying me. Oh no. Deems don't work, just loading loop. Oh no. Is it? Are you using Opera? I know Opera is having like... I don't know if they fixed it yet, but I know some people were complaining about issues with uh, Twitch and uh, Opera. So that could be that. But yeah, COVID is tough. I haven't caught it yet. I probably should have gotten my booster. Uh, no, I'm bald. <laughs> For good luck. They're just giving out. You don't even need... But yeah, I just I've just been lazy to schedule mine. It's because the last time I was supposed to get it, uh, they wouldn't give it to me because it, it was too soon after I had like caught COVID. So they're like, you gotta wait like six months or not six months. I don't remember the exact time, but it was you had to wait a certain amount after you had caught it to be able to like get the 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 shot. These antivirals are six hundred dollars for a five day supply. Oh wow, is that for? Is that for COVID? Or was that for whatever you went to the hospital for? Okay, I don't quite remember what was going on in this for COVID. Ooh, I'd rather just suffer. <laughs> I'd, I, I would not pay $600 for like a five day supply of antivirals. But they're free, but that's how much the U.S. government is paying for them. Oh, okay. I can only afford one more ball head pack. <laughs> oh, man. You'll just have to, uh, I don't know, save up for more, I suppose. Not much you can really do. Or if you like it so much, I can... Add you to the command list for bulb <laughs> headpads. Hey, I think last time we left off, Regina was... She pawned somebody's jacket. And then there was like a music disc inside. Look them up for Canada. They're also free for you. Oh, well, if I ever catch it, I suppose I could... I mean, I probably won't even then, not unless I feel super terrible. Because the last time I caught it, it just felt like a regular fever. Yay for our rich countries. Yeah, the joys of uh, living in uh, first... Uh, pa, 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 I cannot English. First world countries. Hey. Miss Lestrade, is what the gentleman is saying. What do you think? It's all lies, ain't it? Obviously. I swear on my life, I ain't never laid eyes on that dandy before. Let's hear it now, you little rag muffin. You stole it, didn't you? That ticket you bought in here just now. No, I swear. I swear to God. It was barely an hour ago. I was walking along the street, minding my own business. When this little gutterling ran into me, I knew at once what had happened. I've been robbed yet again, I thought to myself. Those wretched pickpockets. Yet again? Oh yes, as you can see, I am a man of impeccable style. This isn't the first time that I've been targeted by these backslum scoundrels. <laughs> Why does everybody have to Jojo pose? <laughs> I can't, I can't, it's so fun. Wait, 
Wait, wait a minute. That outfit totally looks like a JoJo character. Wait, who am I thinking of? I don't know who I'm thinking of, but he looks like he could be a JoJo character. Did you have the most legendary sore throat from Cooties? Oh, you know what? That was... Yeah, I did have a sore throat. I did. It sucked. <laughs> Luckily... The good thing about being in quarantine is you don't have to talk to people, so I didn't, you know, yeah. Now then, relinquish my overcoat. Come along now, Miss Lestrade. Give the good gentleman his coat back. If you're going to cause trouble, I shall have no choice but to call the police. My coughing is destroying my throat, I think. It just keeps making it worse. Oh, yeah. Coughing and sore throats just don't go well together. Especially when your throat is sore because you're coughing so much. Especially if your coughs are, like, the really dry ones. Ugh. Hold on. Why does everyone think it's me? Just look at this dandy cove and you think I'm the dodgy one? I'm sorry, but no one's going to believe you. Well, what about evidence? Yeah! Where's your evidence that I've stolen something, eh? Come on, let's see it. Oh, I have evidence, naturally. You what? Oh, shit. Fun fact, Gina's really fucking cute. Oh my god, really? I didn't notice. No, she's so adorable. I love her, especially when she like pulls out her little like bazooka. Not bazooka, but her little like <sighs> little gun. She thinks she can like threaten people with it. But yeah, I hope maybe maybe try some tea, Bayo, for your throat. She's a survivor and a grinder. That she is. Evidence that the article Miss Lestrade redeemed actually belongs to this gentleman. Of course. We need only consult Mr. Winterbank's ledger to know the truth. We'll be able to look up the name of the person who deposited the article in the first place. Yes, brilliant. I've had zero interest in eating. Yeah. The thing about being sick is sometimes you just... It just takes your appetite from you. You've been surviving on insure. What is that? <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid that won't be possible. Oh. I never ask customers' names. That's a strict policy of mine. But why not? Well, now, as you can imagine, some of my customers have circumstances to consider a great many of them prefer to maintain their own non oh god another english word i cannot pronounce anonymity oh i did it there are meal replacement shakes oh okay i don't think i've ever had them do they taste at least somewhat decent I don't know if you played other Ace Attorney games, but Susato and Kay are my two favorite assistants. Uh, I've only played um, the one with Phoenix. So I played that trilogy, and then so, yeah, now I'm playing through this one. And then eventually, when the Apollo Justice one is released, I will probably play that one too. Although it seems like they're releasing it for like, I think like 80 bucks. So I don't know about that. We'll see. I do want to play um, Investigations because I do want to see that uh, Edgeworth and Gumshoe interaction. But yeah, Susado's great. Does not hesitate to throw a man to the ground and I love her for that. It tastes like vanilla, the different flavors, but Costco only sold vanilla. Mmm, okay. Yes, I see. But then, how can you know if an article belongs to the person asking to redeem it? Oh, it's quite simple. Good sir. Might I trouble you for the watchword associated with the article in question? 
Oh, so they put a password on it. But they call it a, I guess they call it a watchword here. She's badass and also knows the law and like a certain somebody named Maya who I quite like too. <laughs> she, Maya's got the spirit, quite literally. But yeah, Susato and her book always coming in clutch in the trials. Of course, it's... Professor. What? Yes, that's right. And all the evidence we need. This gentleman is the rightful owner of the article, without doubt. Watchword? Interesting. And thus the password was invented. So, about these watchwords, Mr. Windabay. As I just explained, I never ask customers' names when they deposit items with me. There are many reasons why. Certain customers would like to keep their activities secret. <laughs> I like how we just pan over to Sherlock in the corner. <laughs> I love him. The antivirals affect your taste. They leave metal taste in your mouth and... That's not from the pills. Ew. That sounds terrible. It's bitter and sour. I would not want to eat if everything. It's like that, um. What is it? There's like this, um. There's a specific pill you can buy. It's like made out of some ingredient that like alters your taste buds. <laughs> I don't remember what it was made out of, but it was like some sort of like plant or fruit that like affects your taste buds. And that was like, that was a, that was a trending video idea for a while. That wasn't exactly a subtle glance at Mr. Sholmes now, was it? Great detectives of no dark secrets. None at all. Yes, well, anyway, that's why I always ask for a watchword whenever I accept a new article. In many ways, it's like the secret combination of numbers used to unlock a vault. The berries? Yeah, yeah, there were berries, I think. Oh no. Did the boop work? I might not have added the command. No, I didn't add the command. Forgive me. Okay, hold on. Let me just add it quickly. Okay, it is connected. The boop command should work now for you. The date of deposit, a description, and a watchword uniquely identify each item. And of course, then I give the storage ticket to the customer. When someone comes to redeem something, I ask for the ticket and the watchword. And if that someone tells you the correct watchword, you return the article. That's right, sir, yes, just as soon as the requisite fee is paid. And I've supplied you with the information you require already, but for the avoidance of doubt. The article in question is an overcoat, deposited two months ago on 15th February. With a watchword of Professor. All perfectly correct information, sir. But, but how? <laughs> really, this is beyond a joke now. There is no further room for doubt. Ugh. Oh, there's nothing else we can ask her? I guess we talk to him? Excuse me, but who are you? One would expect the inquirer to introduce himself first. Though clearly you are not British, so perhaps our ways are foreign to yours. Oh, sorry, yes, we're from the Empire of Japan. We're studying here. Oh, yes, Japan. I've heard talk of the place. <laughs> no! <laughs> this man did not just shimmy in front of me. <laughs> Okay, okay. 
Ah, uh, I never get tired of these animations. Oh my god, I hope he does it again. <coughs> its inhabitants live on some fiery brown-colored soup dressed up with exotic spices. Brown-colored soup. Oh, I guess he means miso. I don't know. You might be thinking of somewhere else. And what was that theatrical gesticulation about? Perhaps. Anyway, if you are a gentleman, sir, you offer your own name first before inquiring after the name of your of another. Of course. Yes, I'm Ryunosuke Naruhodo. I'm a lawyer. Well, a student of law, really. My name is Susano Mikotoba. I'm Mr. Naruhodo's assistant. I see. My name is... <laughs> My name is... Benedict. Yes, Egbert Benedict. <laughs> no way, this man is Egbert Benedict. <laughs> oh yeah, I do love funny words like gesticulation. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm gonna choke on my own spit. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, his name is Egbert Benedict. Oh, this is this is just as good as buff, uh, beef stroganoff. Oh my gosh. Enchanté. <laughs> Gem apple. Gem apple Benedict. Oh, Egbert Benedict. He's so refined in how he holds himself, and how he speaks. But that name is suspicious. Maybe that's not his real name. Maybe that's, you know, it could be his, uh, could be a fake name. What am I naming my firstborn? I have no idea. I don't even know if I'll have a firstborn. I'm not good at picking out names. So I, I haven't the faintest idea where to start. I'd probably just, like, go on one of those lists and try- Oh, wait, no. I'm lying. I just suddenly rem- <laughs> <laughs> I'm not naming my firstborn Egbert. <laughs> Do you know how cruel that would be? Like, if I was a kid and I went to school and my name was Egbert, people would beat the shit out of me. <laughs> the teachers would look at me with pity if my name was Egbert. <laughs> I I don't want to place that kind of trauma on somebody. <laughs> But yeah, no, I just remembered if I had a firstborn, um, Autumn if it's a girl and Hugh if it's a boy, I think. I don't remember why anymore, but I just remember those were the names I would have picked, like, a long time ago. Now, to the matter at hand. I love how he moves. It's just so... Oh my god. Like the way he just... Oh, I can't. I can't get over it. It's so funny. My overcoat. Return it at once. To someone with the style to carry it off. Oh, every move he makes. Every breath he takes. I can't stand watching him. He is... You know what? He's very funny. His, his, um, his first language is body language. So, let that be an end to the matter. And thank you for your custom, Mr. Egbert Benedict, sir. Oh, Egbert. <laughs> With such reasonable rates of interest, I may even decide to come back. I can't stand it every time he fucking moves. <laughs> that was a line from a song, was it? That's why I ate grown-ups. Just cause I'm a diver, everyone thinks that makes me a liar. And the contents of the coat pockets, if you please, broker. But of course, sir, uh, here is the disc for you. 
Just this one. Pardon, sir? I was expecting another. Uh, that is, I deposited another. Another desk? Oh, um, oh dear. I regret to inform you, sir, that was deposited with... What was... Uh, what the, that what was deposited with me was merely the overcoat. The disc happened to be one of the pockets, but I was completely unaware of it until now. Oh, okay. I've never heard that song before. Nor do I recognize the artist. So, Gutterling, you're hiding more of what's rightfully mine, are you? Says who, eh? I don't know nothing about it. Very well. Then I shall bid you farewell. Say goodbye to style. <laughs> Wait a minute. That disc is mine. Oh shit, she's throwing it down. What, what do you think you're doing, you little tramp? You've... You've drawn blood, you filthy animal. Oh my. Yes, there's blood on the disc. It's because of all those sharp little bumps. The man must have scratched his finger on them. I found it first, alright. I mean, it belonged to me, old man. So you're not having it. Oi, you, take it. Me? If I hang on to it, they'll have it off of me again. So you keep hold of it. Miss Lestrade, I... Why is this disc so important to her? <clears throat> you there, in the Black Library. Hand that disc to me at once, please. No, don't. He's lying. Grown-ups are all liars. <clears throat> what do I do now? How am I going to resolve this? What if I... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I just leave. <laughs> How do I solve this? I just exit. Um, Where is my man Sherlock? Uh, no, not Sherlock. Herlock Sholmes. Does he have anything to say? Uh, Mr. Sholmes. What are you examining with such keen interest there? As you enjoy a bar of caramel, I see. Is he okay? So... You found me at last, Mr. Narahodo. Sorry? After that young pickpocket sent me out on my way, I was forced to lurk in the shadows. Cruelly ostracized, as the rest of you partook, partook in the jovial atmosphere of fellowship. I had nothing to occupy my mind, but was too ashamed to let society see what my downfall had done to me. So, feigning mock interest, I pretended to examine the tedious trinkets in this desolate place. Whilst, as you shrewdly observe, gnawing on the only friend I have left, the 7% solution of caramel. <laughs> He's so sad. <laughs> Pray, do you claim to understand the depths of my despair, Mr. Narahodo? But how could you? I was so lonely, so desperately lonely. Then, why on earth didn't you rejoin the conversation? Things have gone from bad to worse here, you know. Yes, I overheard much of your conversation. Or rather, in my craving for human contact, my ears devoured every word that was uttered. <laughs> I'm gonna use that every time if someone asks if I've been um, overhearing or if I've been eavesdropping. I'll just say in the uh, in the moment my ears craved, but no, in the moment I craved for human contact, and my ears devoured every word that was uttered. <laughs> you really were sad, weren't you? Poor Mr. Sholmes, I feel simply awful for you. It would seem that my inferences are correct. Oh, surely you're not about to tell us. That you've solved the entire case once again. 
Oh my god, is it time for his reasoning deduction extraordinaire? My dear madam, sometimes I wonder. Were my genius for deduction to be commoditized? How much could I pawn it for? Seems Mr. Sholmes has had another of his flashes of inspiration. But who knows if it will help to resolve the situation between Miss Lestrade and Mysterious Gentleman. What's the right thing to do here? I'll oh, listen to it. What, what else do we have to lose? <clears throat> well, Miss Lestrade, it would appear you find yourself in something of a predicament. Where the blue blazes have you been, eh? Pardon? When the lady's in trouble, a true gent's supposed to be there to help. Straight away, not an hour later. <laughs> Harsh. I need to give him a different voice because otherwise he and Herlock are going to sound too similar. <coughs> and who, pray tell, are you? I'm going to give him a fancy voice because I feel like it. Mr. Egbert Benedict, you have in my eyes a veritably encyclo- oh my god, a veritably encyclopedic array of curiosities about your person. Nevertheless, there are two immovable conclusions I have drawn. I beg your pardon. The first is this. The true reason for your visit to this pawnbrokery today is something you have not yet revealed. And the second is this. A considerable crime is in contemplation, one you will orchestrate with intent to steal a vast sum of money. Well, Mr. Benedict, what say you to my deductions? How? He's turned as white as a hard... <laughs> He's turned as white as a hard-boiled egg. You know, it seemed that once again, Mr. Sholmes has made a flawless deduction. Also, a heads up, we might have ads in like three minutes. I don't know. When I updated my ad settings, it didn't reset the timer on the ad manager. So the ads might run or they might not. So we'll have to see. But just a heads up. Just who are... Just who do you think you are, sir? Ah, yes, as I hoped. That is precisely the pained expression I was looking for. The two of them are like, what a pair. <laughs> so, shall we begin? The time has come for yet another Herlock Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular. I can't wait for him to be so horribly wrong. First of all, we must ask ourselves on what business you venture to this pawnbrokery today. You claim to have followed this pickpocket here, having had the redemption ticket stolen from you on the street. But that is most certainly a lie. The real truth is something quite different. Oh, when was he holding that? as revealed by that which you hold in your hand. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the staff recruitment flyer. The piece of paper in your hand is a staff wanted advertisement from this very shop. Yet even the most unobservant would soon realize that a man of your appearance has no need of such employ. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. The cane, which you unwittingly clutch to your person, exhibits an incontrovertible contradiction. What utter rot! I've, I've had this cane for years! The contradiction of which I speak is, of course, the missing th What is that? The rule. I'm guessing it's the little bottom piece that's supposed to protect the wood from, like, hitting the ground. The end of any walking cane would be terminated with a metal ferrule to protect the wooden tip. 
and yet detailed analysis shows the wooden tip of this stick to be utterly bare. <laughs> he says detailed analysis, but anybody with eyeballs can see. Therefore, there is only one conclusion. The rod that you hold in your hand, which appears to be a walking cane, is in fact no cane at all. Suppose that the ads are going to be run soon. I don't know. Let me know if they happen. I really should double check my ad settings. I don't know. They the, the update came out today. It was a mess. Let me go into the options so I don't accidentally hit something and skip. Oh, thank you for the boop. But yes, uh, I'm not vibing with this new ad update. Because my ad manager says starting soon, but I don't know. Maybe if I look on the stream manager on Twitch. Okay, well, supposedly they're supposed to happen. Oh, there they go. Okay, well, there it is. We're gonna wait three minutes for that, supposedly. Oh, wait, no, it's like two minutes. Okay, well, that's a little funky. I do believe I fixed it though, so it should run three minutes every hour. Yeah, okay. I am loving this so far though. I do love the theatrical and this tickles my fancy, so. Do you wonder what the if the second game well no i guess it would make sense for the second game to still take place in uh britain okay one minute left i think um there's actually something i want to change in my graph i added a new movement graph in my program but i don't like how my chest turns away from my head because it looks kind of funny when i look over at the chat i don't know uh, let's see if I can fix that. <clears throat> I don't know if I like this. Zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> I'll just keep it as it was. It's fine. Doesn't bother me too much. Is there a command for cheese cannon? Because I can't redeem. Yeah, there is. There, there always was. Uh, I did add. I did update it now, where it's like a bit of a delay between each cheese slice. So <clears throat> feel free to, I don't know, smother me with cheese or something. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Okay, that broke everything. That broke everything. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Oh, I'm so broken right now. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I did a thing I shouldn't have. Okay. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. No, okay. That just has to be on or off. <laughs> the one downside to this graph is I cannot move side to side um, as I used to. Maybe I can fix that. I can finagle in the settings, but for now, this is what it is. But yeah, the, the, the command for cheese cannon should just be cheese cannon. That's the current delay. It's I think it's like 
I don't know, it's like, I, th I don't remember, it's like probably a hundred milliseconds between each slice. <clears throat> Back to our deductioning extraordinaire, spectacular. You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? Hey! Well, I. And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer of the next conundrum to present itself. Holmes really, um. Sholmes really, really challenges my vocabulary of the English language sometimes. Tomato redeem is broken. Oh, is the, um. You can't throw it, right? Let me see. There was like a period where I had to um, change my password because apparently one of the um, <clears throat> one of the extensions I was using got like hacked or something like that. Oh, ouch! So could it be possible my account's not connected. Configure. Um. No, it's still connected. Channel points authorize. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I had to reauthorize. Oh. Well. This is. This is annoying. I have to re-add all of them. Give me a second, what did I have? I had the tomato and I had the rock. And then the egg and the cake, okay. All 200. I don't know what that's gonna do to my attack. Ooh. Okay, I think those overrid the old ones. But they should work now, I think. Let me refund you for that, uh... Um, you know what? I can't be bothered, and the last time I checked this thing was 14 days ago, so... Everybody in the past two weeks who spent points, you can have them all back. <laughs> uh... Okay. They don't have their pictures anymore, but they should work now. I'll update the pictures again later. But they should work now. Namely, what is the truth behind this rod you bear? Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. Oh, there we go. The handle, which you evidently would like to conceal, is the key to understanding the riddle, you see. From the moment I saw it, my suspicions were aroused. What walking cane demands such a stout handle, mused I. I don't know, when you stick up your ass? But of course, as I said, this is no walking cane. No, that rod. is the broken handle of a shovel. What? Are you insane? And now, having determined this undeniable truth, the conclusion is clear. Your true motive for coming here. Those require a wide base. Oh. Do you use a walking rod or cane? 
I tried using it. Maybe it wasn't the right height, but it was just yeah, not for me. Was to take employment at this establishment in order to excavate the ground beneath the premises. What a calculated crime you have conceived, sir. A wickedly calculated crime. <laughs> now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must expose the details of this elaborate crime you have in the planning. This is utterly absurd. You suggest that I, a gentleman, intend to excavate the ground beneath this pawnbrokery with a broken shovel. What on earth do you propose I could expect to find there? <laughs> Some long forgotten treasure, I suppose. Save for such a fanciful theory, what possible reason could I have to do as you say? Oh, but there is ample reason. As you are only too well aware, Mr. Benedict. Ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Let us consider what would motivate a man to infiltrate a shop such as this and covertly dig beneath its floor. Yeah, I love the gesticulations. They're so funny. The answers revealed by the council note on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. I'm pretty sure his eyes were drawn to the gun, but sure. He would make a great YouTube personality. He would. People would find it very entertaining. This letter gives notice of public works to be carried out in the local area. And according to the enclosed plan of the upcoming sewage, sewerage works. Beneath this shop runs a sewer that adjoins another. One that runs under the bank on the opposite side of the road. Oh shit, really? This madness has entered the sewers now, has it? By excavating the ground beneath our feet, you would gain access to the waterway. That flows in very close proximity to the great vault of the financial institution opposite. What are you? In summary, sir. You devised a master plan to pull off an elaborate bank robbery by dint of the underground tunnels. M master plan! Which brings us at last to the final chapter of the, this lurid scheme. With what plunder did the thief hope to make off from the underground vault of the bank? Are you quite serious? Having consulted with Scotland Yard some days ago, I happen to know the answer. But naturally, the answer is no secret to you, is it, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, the picture postcard tells us all we need to know. A postcard of the Great Exhibition? I'm afraid you've quite lost me. Currently in the final stages of preparation, the Great Exhibition will soon be underway. And the government has preside pa, pa, pa. And the government has provided extra funds to complete its centerpiece, the Crystal Tower. The funds that currently sit in the vault of the bank on the on the other side of the road. Pardon? Yes, the considerable crime you have been contemplating. is the theft of that which sits in the vault of the bank, the special reserve funds for the Great Exhibition. Of course, that is top secret police information, so keep it under your hat, please. <laughs> he just exposed it to like five people in this room. <laughs> if it's so secret, how would he know, you know? Someone who just gesticulates dramatically at everything. Yeah, I would not want to watch his apology video. That would be very dramatic. And thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this pawnbroking puzzle. Oh god. <laughs> All the boops. 
I considered adding because what I did is with the boop, I made it so that like when I get booped, my head like flinches backwards a bit. Maybe I don't know. I could make it stronger. Still testing it out. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Um, Mr. Shums. Well, Mr. Naruhodo, an impressively upbeat deduction for a detective racked with loneliness, would you not agree? <laughs> I feel like it'd be very... He'd be very high maintenance if you were to be his friend or, like, date him. I don't know, Just that, that's just a little bit of the vibes I'm getting with. You, like, ignore him, like, a little bit, and he's just very wounded. Was it true what you said about the bank over the road and what it has in its vault? Indeed, though few know of its existence, it is one of the government's most closely guarded secrets. Gregson told me the strictest confidence. But you just announced it to everyone here. Rather loudly, in fact. Ah. Uh. And if it's such a big secret, how would Mr. Benedict have come to find out about it? There can be but one explanation for that. Clearly, it's because the man is a criminal. But what if he didn't know anything about the money in the vault? If he is a criminal, as you said, then buying a brand new shovel is sure to be the first thing he does now that you've revealed the secret. Oh. Or if he doesn't, maybe Mr. Windebank will. He already has plenty of shovels here after all. Hey, my life, I assure you I'm not so unscrupulous. Hmm, well, hopefully this has taught you a valuable lesson. A sensitive information must be handled with the utmost of care. One can never be sure that someone privy to secrets won't disclose them. Once the word is out, it's out. Perhaps I'll think twice before confiding in you next time, Mr. Sholmes. An excellent idea, Mr. Narihodo. An excellent idea. <laughs> well then, Mr. Narihodo. You know what to do, I'm sure. Yes. Let's listen to that great deduction again and see if we can massage it into shape. Very well then. Let us start once more from the beginning. A Herlock Sholmes' magnificent logic and reasoning spectacular. <laughs> okay. Claim to follow the pickpocket, having the ticket stolen. That's a lie. The real truth is something quite different. As revealed by that which you hold in your hand. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the staff recruitment flyer. So, by Mr. Sholmes' reasoning, Mr. Benedict came here in order to apply for a job so he could dig down through the floor. Yes, in an attempt to tunnel into the sewers to gain access to the money in the vault of the bank across the road. But he wouldn't get very far with a broken shovel, would he? No, I think it's fair to say his motives lie elsewhere. The question is, where? What did br what did bring Mr. Benedict here at this particular point in time? Okay. <laughs> his stylish hat. Can I look at it? That silk top hat is whiter than white. Only an English gentleman could hope to carry off something so bright. And it looks so incongruous with the black overcoat, don't you think? Perhaps it's the latest London fashion. I mean, that's just guesswork, of course. How about it, Mr. Naruhodo? I think you'd look very fetching in a white top hat. Well, you know, I think it might look rather incongruous with my black university uniform, so... Yeah, this man claims to be stylish, but he's wearing like a white hat with a black jacket.
I don't think I can look at anything in the background. A stylish hat, his cane. I think that's about all I can look at. The flyer, the cane, and his hat. Probably the cane, but we'll look at the flyer. It certainly is a flyer from Mr. Windabank's shop. Let's see. Windabank wants you. Pawnbroker's assistant required. It's an eye-catching advertisement, that's for sure. I've seen the same flyer up here inside the shop, I think. Perhaps Mr. Winterbank is always in need of more staff. So Mr. Benedict came here to apply for a job. That's just too hard to believe. Okay, what about his cane? That's a proper English gentleman's cane, isn't it? Look at the beautifully polished brass on the handle. Yes, but Mr. Sholmes is right. It's not the sort of handle you usually see on a cane. Perhaps it's the latest London fashion. I mean, that's just guesswork, of course. Perhaps you could adopt a cane, Mr. Narahodo. It might rather suit you. I have a feeling it might argue with the sword around my waist. <laughs> God, do you think Kazuma would, like, rise out of his grave if he learned that we were using his sword as a cane? The disrespect. I think that's the only three things I can look at. And out of all of those things, I have no idea why he came here. Probably the... Oh, what's this? AG? Oh, Ayo? Oh. Look at all the scribbled notes on the back of the flyer here. I don't believe it. What is it? I can't believe... Like, trying to imagine this in real time is so funny. Can you imagine... Like, you're paused. Right? And these people are just, like, circling you and, like, looking at you. What is it? Listen to what it says. Name, Gina Lestrade. Height, 5 foot 2. Oh, she's 5 foot 2. She's so cute and tiny. Granted, I'm not tall either, so. Green cap, scruffy waistcoat, grubby white shirt, blue satchel, ragged. It's a detailed description of Miss Lestrade. Goodness. There's even a sketch of her, hat and all. Although, if he showed it to her, she'd fire that smoke grenade launcher in his face for sure. I want to see that. And look, the details of this shop have been written down here, too. Windabank's Prawn Brokery, Baker Street. Redemption deadline, 15th April. Which is today's date. Why would Mr... Is it me or is the game window not fitting right? Hold on, I think the game- Oh my god, has it this entire time? Hold on. Oh my god. I'm so ashamed. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> oh. No, nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I don't know why it did that. Oh god, did I do autoplay by accident? I think I did an autoplay. Why would Mr. Benedict have all that information scrawled on the back of that piece of paper? Okay. Also, it says AG on here. I don't think we can, like, look at that specifically, though. But it does say AG, so... You are not Egbert Benedict, I don't think. Anyways, I'm gonna present this writing. Yes, what brought you to this shop in the first place is the info about Miss Lestrade. Quite so, my dear fellow. It would appear that the writing and sketch on the reverse of the flyer pertain to the pickpocket Miss Lestrade and to Mr. Winderbank's pawnbrokery here. Ah! You originally told us. That you had merely given chase after Miss Lestrade stole the redemption ticket from you. But that, sir... Oh, that's... that Sholmes. But that, sir, is a thinly veiled lie. It is the information on the back of the flyer that led you here today, by which I mean... Here, 
to win the bank's pawn. Pa, why do I? Why can I not say pawn brokery? Pawn brokery. And today, the redemption deadline of that overcoat. So, you waited outside for the young girl matching the description you have written down to arrive. <laughs> and you have gone to some lengths to hide the reason for your pursuit of Miss Lestrade. In other words, there is some ulterior motive for your actions. Again, would you unwittingly clutch to your person exhibits an incontrovertible contradiction. What a rot! I've, I've had this cane for years! The contradiction of which I speak is, of course, the missing furrow. A furrow? A furrow? I don't know. I can't English. Um, it's it's like learning what an aglet is, okay? Nobody knows what it is. <laughs> Nobody calls it that. <laughs> um, what's a furrow? It's the metal cap, commonly found on the end of a king, Mr. Narahodo. Ah, the bit that makes a nice clacking sound on the pavement. Yes, exactly. Mr. Sholmes is right. It appears to be missing on the cane. But it doesn't actually look broken, does it? No, it doesn't. Though the gentleman certainly did recoil when Mr. Sholmes identified the cane as suspicious. In other words, there's some secret about the cane that Mr. Benedict would rather we don't know. I don't think I can... I can look at his stylish hat yet again. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's obviously the initials. Um, I can look at the missing... Fr I don't know if they'll say anything different. The end of this cane is just bare wood. Yes, and according to Mr. Sholmes' deduction, this is where the shovel blade would have been attached. Hmm... Couldn't it just be that? Couldn't it just be that the tip fell off? I'm sorry, Mr. Narahodo, but I couldn't possibly speculate. Okay, it's it's over here. The A G initialing. I don't think I can look at anything else. Look here, Miss Susado. There's some letters on the handle. Oh, yes. Those must be initials, I think. Of course, Miss Marvel out here having her lock shelves. <laughs> no, don't call me out like that. Can you blame me? He's so hot. <laughs> Although he's a, he's a little dumb sometimes, but you know, we love him anyway. In the West, it's customary for people to engrave their belongings with the first letter of their names. So her lock shelves would be HS, you mean? That's right. And the initials on this cane, obviously. Oh. A. G. Why does it feel as though that's not quite right? Well. That's because it's not. A. G. does not stand for Egbert Benedict. Egbert Bene Benedict would have been E. B. He do be hot, I must agree. Oh my god. <laughs> I showed Miss Des and she had about the same reaction. Showed her the fully geared herlock than him in his casual outfit. Roderick, if you had been there when I saw him in his casual outfit. <laughs> you were? Okay. Yeah. I had to, t I, I needed a moment. It's just, oh my God, I can't. They knew what they were doing when they designed him. <laughs> I wasn't... I wouldn't say I was panting. <laughs> Take that. But yes, it does seem to be the consensus that Herlock Sholmes is... very nice looking. The contradiction of which I speak is, of course, the initialing. Male wife, he is. He does give, like, that male wife himbo energy. He'll try to, like, do stuff on his own, but you kind of have to help him out a little bit because he's so dumb. <laughs> a most astute, 
I can't English. A most astute observation, wouldn't you say, Mr. Egbert Benedict? We are led to believe, sir, that your initials are E.B. Oh my god, you should show uh, Des um, Herlock in his um, other outfit. He has a third outfit. Um, I can't put it on him until the second game, but he has like another outfit. <laughs> yeah, he's got another outfit. It's like... Yeah, he, I think he's in like... um. Because in the second game, everyone has an alternate outfit. Well, not everybody, but like, like the main cast. Like Naruhodo, Susado, and like um, Shomes. They have like an alternate outfit. And it's basically swapped. So like Naruhodo and like Susado are more like kind of like London steampunk vibes. And then Shomes is like more like Japanese. I don't know. It's very, it, they're, they're all cute. I think it's the, I think it was pink. I don't remember. We are led to believe, sir, that your initials are EB. Yet, in a most possessive manner, you have in your grasp a cane bearing the initials AG. An incredent. Oh my god, I can't say this word. Why do you have to keep using it, Sholmes? <laughs> An incontrovertible contradiction, indeed. Would you not agree? No, you're, you're wrong. This cane isn't. You said before that you'd had that cane for years. Ugh. <sighs> So don't try to tell us that you just borrowed it from a friend or found it in the park. In short, though you hold yourself to be a gentleman, you have withheld your true name. You recoil, sir. Is something wrong? I well, I... And in your recoiling, you inadvertently facilitate the answer of the next conundrum to present itself. Namely, what is the truth behind this rod you bear? Yes, your reaction betrays the truth. The handle which you evidently would like to conceal is the key to understanding this riddle you see. Let's consider the bare bones of what's happened here. Miss Lestrade redeemed that fine-looking overcoat. And now a mysterious man has appeared, introducing himself with a fake name. And claiming that the overcoat belongs to him. But we know that he actually identified Miss Lestrade from a written description. Which suggests that everything else he's told us is untrue. So what do we need to do here? Is somehow prove that the overcoat cannot possibly belong to him. Uh, do you think it's time to show the hat? Okay, if I look at the handle, can I look at the, um... Oh, there's a broken, there's a split seam. Oh, there's no way this overcoat's yours. There's no way. I don't know if they'll say the same. I think I've observed the handle before. I'm not sure. It is a rather strange handle for sure. Yes, certainly unusual for a gentleman's cane. You expect to see such a cane being twirled charmingly by its owner as he skips merrily down the street. You do? Oh, something has just occurred to me. We have a shovel back in our office, don't we? Oh my god, we do! <laughs> I remember seeing it. Yes, you're right. And its handle is exactly the same shape as this cane's. Here we go. Now I'm starting to wonder if it's not actually a cane at all, but a spade. Mr. Sholmes' deductions are curiously compelling, aren't they? I did look at the hat before. I don't know if it's going to give me the same dialogue. I've been looking closely at that hat for some time now, and it suddenly occurred to me that a bright white top hat like that might be just the hat for me. <laughs> no way! You like it, do you? I think I do. Don't I? Well, in that case, you can see if there isn't something similar among Mr. Windebank's forfeited items. After we've concluded our investigation, we must focus on the task in hand at the moment. 
I like how he started out being like, nah, this hat would clash with my school uniform to, you know what? I think I like it. <laughs> this is what we call character development. We love to see it. I have my window open. I don't know who's cooking what, but it smells delicious and I'm dying inside. It is stylish. It is very stylish. You should have seen him with his like, um, with his original coat. It was like matching the hat and everything. Oh, the seam on the shoulder there is coming apart. Look. So it is. Do you know, a moment ago when Mr. Benedict was surprised by something, that was said. I thought I heard him make a rather strange noise. It sounded a bit like a tiny growl. But now I think it was probably the sound of the seam ripping open. Oh, you know what? That makes sense. For someone who gesticulates a lot for like a poorly made um, overcoat, it would probably break really easily. Food? Yeah. Oh my god. I think I was like walking around the school campus and I smelled fried chicken and I died inside. <laughs> it was like, it was like 10, 11 in the morning and I smelled fried chicken. I was like, oh my god, where is it coming from? If you look closely, it does seem to be a very tight fit. The sleeves are stretched to bursting and he wouldn't have a hope of fastening it at the front. If he were to run around in it, I'm sure the whole thing would fall apart. Mmm, that I'd like to see. Sorry? <laughs> so how can we make Mr. Benedict run around? You know, that has two connotations to it. Like... It could be that she wants to see his clothes, like, rip, and, like, I do agree that would be very funny. But there's also the other implication where, like... <laughs> She's really giving this some thought. Okay, it's gotta be this. The split seam which you evidently would like to conceal is the key to understanding this riddle, you see. No! <laughs> Too many bonks. Too many bonks breaks it. Yes, because the overcoat is rather obviously a poor fit. Having forced it over your broad shoulders, the seam is already breaking apart. That sounds like such a... That sounds like such a... That sounds like such a... I don't know. What what are the words I'm looking for? That sounds like... I don't know. That sounds like something very bra uh, brag worthy. My shoulders were so broad. The, this jacket could not contain it. I don't know. <laughs> uh... My suspicions were aroused from the outset. When you so boldly lied about your name, so boldly waylaid this pickpocket. Ah! This catalogue of untruths has all been for one very specific purpose. To steal the article that the young girl redeemed from Mr. Windebank. Oh! <laughs> but what really irks me is this. The considerable crime I initially imagined has been considerably curtailed. Okay, to abscond with a redeemed item. Right, what was this one? Oh, right, to steal from the bank. Now, Mr. Benedict, let us continue. For we must expose the details of this elaborate crime you have in the planning. This is utterly absurd. You suggest that I, a gentleman, designed a wheeze to filch some tawdry article upon it. Have you forgotten that I redeemed the article in the proper manner using the watchword? <laughs> Had I not been the one to deposit it in the first place? How could I possibly have known the relevant details, n'est-ce pas? Oh my god, more friends. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, I'm having war flashbacks of 
Jean Armstrong. <laughs> oh, but the what word can be discovered. As you are only too well aware, Mr. Benedict. Oh, he just glanced over and found it out, didn't he? Ah, and your furtive glance is more telling than I could have hoped. What? Let us consider how one might come to learn a secret watchword relating to the pond property of another. The method is revealed by the council notice on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. The direction of the deduction must change rather dramatically now, I think. Yes, no more talk of tunneling into the sewers. Which is a pity, because it all sounded rather exciting. Anyway, you can't deny that this mysterious gentleman did know the watchword. Mm, yes, Professor. If you didn't know that word, Mr. Winnebank would never allow you to redeem the article. Or looking at it another way. But the thing is, if he wouldn't have given it away, that would mean that Gina knew the, um, the watchword. And how would Gina know the watchword then? If you did know that word, Mr. Windebank would allow you to redeem the article, whether it was yours or not. So the question is, could this gentleman have found the watchword out somehow? I don't know. I mean, like, this giant ledger book? No, is it not it? The notelet, maybe, I guess? His revolver. <gasps> is that a kitty? Oh my god, that's a picture of a cat, and I'm not allowed to look at it? Oh. They really don't want to, me to be happy in this game. Okay, an old lamp. Sure, we'll look at it. Oh, I forget. I can rotate. Okay, we'll look at this old lamp, because why not? Maybe if we rub it, a genie will come out. This looks to be quite an old lamp. But it's obviously been well looked after, and there's oil in it, too. In other words, it's still in use. Yes, it would appear so. But as for how it could be related to Mr. Benedict knowing the watchword for the pond article, I have no idea. That makes two of us. Oh, that's a nice feather. I always liked feathers. If I could, I would collect them. But my mom would have had a fit. She would have deemed it dirty. But yeah, I don't know. I was always fascinated by feathers and like the different colors and like the textures. Okay. Revolver. <laughs> the, the one with the single bullet in it. This, this is Mr. Windebank's gun. Yes, loaded with only one bullet, he said. It would appear that being a pawnbroker is a very life or death profession. That might just be this particular establishment. Dinner's here, so I'm gonna eat, but I'll leave a lurk for you. Oh, thank you! I hope you enjoy your dinner. You know what? If I were to leave my stuff in a pawnbroker's place, might as well leave it at the guy who would, like, literally die if he did you wrong. <laughs> Baker Street Works is the title. Yes, and it does mention sewerage works, as Mr. Shom said. Oh, and specifically mentions that tonight's sale at the confectionery shop on the corner won't be affected. Ooh! Case solving first, confectionery later, Mr. Narahoto. But the donuts! Ugh, curse my overly expressive face. Oh, yeah, he does have quite the expressive face, doesn't he? Every time he's in court, he's bug-eyed. Okay, it's gotta be this note lit. Look at this, Miss Usato. Ah, it appears to be a memo that Mr. Windebank has scribbled to himself. Let's see, what does it say? Oh, Professor. Mr. Windebank must make a note of the watchwords his customers give him right before their eyes. And in an alarmingly clear script as well. Oh dear. I, uh, I... I don't know where to look. Who knows what other secrets I might see? Oh dear. Okay, so that's gotta be it. 
I don't think there's anything else I can look at. No, okay. The method is revealed by the notelet on the counter to which your eyes were inadvertently drawn. Yes, the broker here follows the same procedure whenever a customer comes to redeem an article. He asks the customer for the watchword and notes down the response uttered on a notelet he has to hand. And then he consults his ledger and confirms whether or not the watchword matches that of the article in question. I would expect nothing less of a diligent pawnbroker. But his diligence clearly has its disadvantages. What are you talking about? It is increasingly apparent that you were present in this shop before your accusation against Miss Lestrade. In all likelihood, you followed her inside and then observed her talking to Mr. Windebank. When the diligent broker made note of the watchword, as is his common practice, you observed him writing the word Professor on the notelet beside the ledger. And that, sir, was the master plan you devised to steal the pond article from the young Miss Lestrade. M master plan! Which brings us at last to the final chapter of this lurid scheme. Why would you go to such lengths to redeem that particular article from this pawnbroker? Are you quite serious? For an ill-fitting overcoat hardly seems to justify the effort, much less a worthless music box disc. But naturally, you had very good reason to make them yours, didn't you, Mr. Benedict? I have no idea what you're talking about. Allow me to present a rather interesting piece of evidence. You see, this picture postcard tells us all we need to know. The articles we're talking about are the overcoat and the music box disc that was in one of the pockets. Which, according to Mr. Windebank, isn't even worth a penny. And yet this man went to such lengths to steal them. Why? I wonder if, perhaps... We already have the evidence we need to explain it, Mr. Narahodo. Could we? Really? I'd better have a thorough look through all the evidence we've collected so far. <laughs> I better take a look at all the evidence we've collected so far, and there's just a single item. Why can't we play this? Oh, 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 there's a note. Anyways, can I look at the little bit of blood on it? Look at all the little bumps on the disc. They're so tiny. Yes, the protrusions are called pins, and they pluck the teeth of the combs to make notes. And just on the edge, there's a small amount of blood. Yes, the blood of the mysterious Mr. Egbert Benedict. When Miss Lestrade tried to grab the disc from him, the pin scratched his fingers, it seems. Like when you're grating some daikon radish and accidentally catch your finger. Ouch. Just thinking about it hurts. It puts me off eating radish. Have you guys ever done that? It's so... Well, it's not like the most painful thing in the world, but it still hurts. It's like, ooh, the sting. I don't remember what I was... I don't remember what I was grading. What was I grading? I think it must have been cheese or something. No. What was I grading? I don't remember. I was I was grading something. And yeah, I grazed like my first knuckle. And oh boy. Uh, let's just say I put... I literally put my blood, sweat, and tears into that. Whatever I was making. I think I was baking. <laughs> But it was fine, because I think I was the only one who ate it, so... I, I would have never fed that to somebody. That would have been really weird. Oh, there's a little scrap of paper stuck into the reverse side of the disc. Look. And a scribbled word or two. It looks like somebody's name. <gasps> wait, Mr. McGilded! Wait, 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 wait... That was the guy that died in the first case. Well, not a first case, but our first case in London. That was the guy that died in the first case. Yeah! Oh. 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 Okay. 
because Gina said, uh, and I roughly quote, he said it would be worth a lot. She did have the chance to interact with him. They were both in court together at one point in time. So that's, ooh, ooh, okay, okay. Or Mr. McGilded. M McGilded? It, it couldn't be. But it is, Mr. Naruhodo. A name I shall never forget for as long as I live. But why? Why is his name on this? Uh-ohs. Okay. We can now present this. You see, this music box disc tells us all we need to know. What's that on the back? It reads for McGilded. Ah! Oh my god, this man! You guys remember this guy? Ah, uh, Mr. Magnus McGilded. He was the one who turned really crispy. The unfortunate philanthropist who perished in curious circumstances at the Old Bailey two months ago. A prominent man in London, though his loan mongering demonstrated a distinct lack of scruples. So, you're an associate of his, are you? Or perhaps a subordinate? Mr. McGilded was a man of unusually small stature. In fact, he was precisely the right size for that overcoat that you've squeezed yourself into. Because I was just thinking, well, I mean, it was a little big on Gina, but it still fit her fine. Your true identity remains shrouded in mystery, Mr. Egbert Benedict. But the final conclusion here is crystal clear. The reason you came to this pawnbrokery today. Was to retrieve an article left behind by the late Magnus McGilded. I love how expressive he is. It makes it more fun. Well, well, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expected to hear in these circumstances. Mr. Sholmes, I'm afraid there's something very troubling on my mind. Right tell, Miss Usato. Well, according to what Mr. Windebank told us earlier, today was the final day on which the coat could have been redeemed, was it not? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Today would be precisely two months since it was first deposited. The court case was around two months ago, was it not? Well, today is 15th April, so two months ago today. Would have been 15th February, sir. That's right. It's all carefully recorded in my ledger. Deposited at 10.30pm, I see. What? But... But that suggests... Yes, 15th February. It's precisely the day on which the omnibus murder took place. And half past ten in the evening is precisely the time at which the terrible events were unfolding. Suggestive is not the word. It would seem the matter is entirely beyond coincidence. Oh, wow. When you... <sighs> I don't know how they keep doing it. They keep somehow managing to tie everything together and it's insane. You are, of course, at liberty to make whatever outlandish deductions you choose. However... I must insist you hand over the music box disc now. 
Oh shit, he's got a gun. It would be a terrible shame for you to return to your native land in a box. Uh, what do I do? <laughs> what if I say no and I just die? You know what? You know what? Screw you. No. There are some things a man must protect at all costs. This may well be one of those things. Then again, it may not. <laughs> Mr. Windabank! This is my shop! I can't allow any harm to come to my customers. If that were to happen, I should have to take my own life! Oh my god. I thought he was gonna come in here and rescue me. <laughs> also, heads up, we have ads in five minutes. Mr. Windabank! No! Alright, that's enough! Oh no, that's Gregson. Inspector Gregson. Inspector? That's right, sunshine. The alarm was raised on one of our dedicated emergency lines. So we got here as fast as we could. Now, what's all this about, day? Eh, praise be. You're here at last. I was moments away from forfeiting my own life and my very own establishment. It would seem you have the upper hand. Yeah, there we go. His matching jacket. Why do you lot have got some explaining to do? I don't appreciate being bothered with some petty argy-bargy. <laughs> That's another one for the dictionary, argy-bargy. Petty? Mr. Windabank very nearly met with his end. Yeah, by his own- Oh god, why did I go there? Yeah, by his own gun, as far as I can tell. Oh, dear. And the whole of Britain could meet with its end if I don't get to the bottom of the case I'm supposed to be working on. What? What on earth is the case, Inspector? Don't tell me somebody robbed the bank. <laughs> Spare no detail, Gregson. I might have said a little too much. No matter. It's nothing to do with you lot. Anyway, sir, you're gonna have to come you're gonna have to come with me down to the station. But of course, Inspector. Oh He's getting away Get after him, lads. Whistle the beat officer too. Sir Oh my goodness. I can't believe he actually got away with it. There's been a spate of thefts at pawn shops around here recently. So we fitted emergency buttons underneath the counters for brokers to let us know when there's trouble. Oh, Inspector, I was very worried for a while. Very worried indeed. Now then, Mr. Perrett Liam Morning. Oh. Y yes I'll be taking that whatever it is of McGilded's down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. Oh, yes, of course. No, don't. Don't give it to him. It's mine, that is. Mine. I'm sorry, miss. But anything belonging to McGilded has to be taken in as evidence now. As evidence? If the police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. I almost could not pronunciate that for a second. It's all yours, Inspector. Oh. And so we and so we handed Mr. McGilded's disc over to Inspector Gregson, and we're summer summarily turfed out of the shop and onto the street. I feel like a bank robbery is, is going to happen. Yes? I don't know. Shomes did drop that big bomb of how, like, there's a bunch of money being held in that bank right now. Which makes me wonder, does the bank have a panic button? I think this is the one I can save over. Okay. 
Okay, the dogs are still snoozing behind me. Okay, ads in like 30 seconds? I'll just run them now. And then we'll come back in like three minutes. So I will see you then. And then, for, yeah, I'll do that so I don't accidentally skip something. Okay, see you guys in three minutes. Or less. Really depends on Twitch. Because sometimes they, um, they don't really do the whole three minutes. I, throw, I thought I would be struggling with my throat, but no, my nose is just really itchy. Alright. I don't quite know yet if we're going to find out everything about Mr. McGilded. Maybe that's what the second game is for. Because there's a lot of unanswered questions. There's Mr. McGilded's death. There's the Grim Reaper of the Bailey that we don't know too much about. We don't know his whole backstory and why supposedly everybody who gets away um, who is not guilty ends up dying like pretty soon after. I don't know. There's some sort of conspiracy theory to that. If we're going to get to the bottom of it in the first game, I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, maybe. It feels like a lot to wrap up in one game, though. It might just continue on to the second. You know what? I could save here. Um, I did save, right? I did save, so. It's fine. Let me go look at the outfits. I think it was just um, Narahodo, Susado, and Shomes who you could... um change the outfits for. I think it was just those three. Yeah. Yeah, it's just those three. <laughs> you look so cute. Oh, Iris's homemade dress. Iris's homemade suit. Oh, that's cute. So Iris made these outfits for them. That's so all. That makes it just like 10 times cuter. Oopsies. I didn't realize he has a little mouse on his shoulder. Is that a little mouse? I can't see. It won't let me zoom in. And then we got Susato. I love Susato's. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. I mean, her arm is clipping through that bag a little bit, but we're not going to pay attention to that. It's just the little details. I think I'll just turn this on so I don't forget later. Because I do- I don't know about Shomes, though. Like, this look is so iconic, and I do like the steampunk aesthetic. But like this one, I get to see his hair more. And you know what? We'll try this out. We'll try that out. Yeah, we'll try it. And if I ever want to, I can just switch back in the menu. So we'll just leave everything on, all the alternate outfits on for now. Welcome back from the ads. I was just um, looking at the alternate outfits for the second game. But yeah, it's just the three of them that gets the outfits. Which I'm hoping means we see Shomes a lot in the second game. Because he only ever really appeared for like... Two... Three cases? I mean... Mainly the ship. And he's probably going to be in this one a lot. And the other... That other one, he was... I don't think he was really there. Not from what I recall. Okay, we're on Baker Street now. See? That's why I ate grown-ups. All they do is feed you pack of lies and take stuff away from you. Oh, really, Mr. Strahd? Tell me, is that overcoat keeping you warm? What? Oh my, surely you were given that. Yeah, but do let me keep it after I looked daggers at him for long enough. He went through the pockets and then said, Go on then, have it, before telling me to scarper. Always pays off giving people a look like you weighed them. I can't help feeling that it's going to get you into serious trouble one day. That coin thing is so cool. I wonder how difficult it is to, like, do it. Well, 
I really wanted was that nice shiny disc, mind. Music box disc? But Mr. Windebank said it was practically worthless. I think I'm gonna go out. Uh, I think I'm gonna go and have another bash. Give him a long and odd stare. I think not, Miss Lestrade. We shan't enter Windebanks again today. Why not? That's not fair. It can't be helped, I'm afraid. The police are investigating the scene now and taking a statement from Mr. Windebank. That disc mine. I had the ticket for the oath for this coat, and it was in this coat's pocket. And there should be something else, then all. That's what the rotten code said, ain't it? Yes, he did mention something about another article, didn't he? Well then, that's mine too. Whatever it is. Now she's really pushing her luck. Miss Lestrade, I think it's time to admit defeat. You've had your haul for the day. Yeah, and it's all your fault, Sherms. So what are your plans now? Will you dine with us this evening? Eh? Huh? I was really delighted to cook, I'm sure. And I might entertain you with a modest violin recital. Oh, I hope we actually get to hear some nice violin from him. Because whatever we heard that morning was abysmal. It was like an assault on my delicate musical senses. No. Ta. Oh. Why would I come round your place, eh? Have you lost your head or something? <laughs> it's not like I like you or anything. Oh dear. She's gone. Mm, having reviled on me quite unnecessarily, I might add. I can't help wondering if perhaps she might turn up anyway. Interesting. Once she's had a chance to calm down, I think there's a good chance she'll decide to come. Very well, then. I'll inform Iris to set a place for our potential guest at the dinner table this evening. And one more thing. I should be glad of your company later, too. Sorry? I believe I will have a rather splendid surprise to show you. Oh, how exciting! What is it? You shall have to wait and see, Miss Usato. Until later, then. <laughs> okay. What can we look at out here? I mean, there's the... There's the pawnbrokers. I don't know if there's anything on this side. I've investigated thoroughly, but I can't find anything out of place. Whoopsies, I didn't mean to... I meant to slide to the side. M? Okay, that's where we live. Look at all the different things in the window of this shop. Huh, that's Windebanks and the pawnbrokery. Looks much smarter than a pawnbroker's in Japan, doesn't it? Yes, you're right. I find pawn shops at home rather inapproachable personally. Reminds me of tearfully parting with my favorite fountain pen. I felt so miserable. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger, Mr. Narahodo. Oh, and believe me, many things have tried to kill me. I'm surprised he even survived that, like, um, boat trip. It's already been two months since we started taking lodgings here above Mr. Shones' office. I still can't quite believe it. I never expected things would turn out like this. Oh, I know. To actually be sharing accommodations with the world's greatest detective. If I ever find myself before a court of law now, I'll have not... I'll have not one regret. I... don't know what you're talking about, but I'd be happy to defend you, of course. Alright, time to go inside. I guess. Are we gonna, like, time skip to dinner? Uh, okay, no, it's only 3.46pm. 
Ah, uh, Susie and Bruno, come in, come in. Good afternoon, Iris. Thank you very much for breakfast this morning. Oh, don't mention it. Goodness, look at the time already. Busy as always. I am. Oh god, I can't do her voice very well today. I am. I'm preparing everything for dinner this evening. Already? You're obviously cooking something special, are you? Oh yes, after all, we have a special guest joining us. Guess who it is? Go on. <laughs> You'll never guess. Um. Look at those little eyes of hers shining. Oh dear. It is awkward when you already know the answer, isn't it? It's Ginny. Isn't that exciting? Oh, oh, what a surprise! Yes, that's wonderful news. Wow, Harry seems overjoyed at the idea. I mean, they're probably similar in age, so, you know, exciting for her. Her bag is so cute. I can't wait to learn some pickpocketing tips from a real professional. <laughs> oh, no, Iris. Oh, yes, that does sound like fun. I'm not sure that's entirely appropriate. Are you, Mr. Naruhodo? Uh, by the way, Iris, what's Mr. Sholmes up to? <laughs> there he is. Hurley? Oh, he's been like that ever since he got back. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. I beg that you won't speak to me. Sorry? I don't know who you are, but kindly take your leave. As you can see, I'm not here. I... I don't know how to respond to that. I do apologize. When he gets like this, he's completely oblivious to everything. Yes, I see. Really, he behaves just like a child sometimes. Hurley does. Mr. Sholmes and Iris have something of the parent and child relationship, don't they? Yeah, Iris is the parent and Sholmes is the child. <laughs> Yes, except that Iris is clearly the parent here. Come to think of it, I wonder where her real parents are. What's the matter, Runa? You have, you have ever such a funny look on your face. Oh, no, it's, it's nothing. I know what it is. And why does this girl here live with Mr. Sherms, you're wondering? Am I right? How... how did you... <laughs> oh, Bruno, I can read you like a book. Oh, this girl's dangerous. Don't worry, you can ask me anything. I won't mind. So by Ginny... You mean Miss Lestrade, the young woman from the McGilded case two months ago, right? Yes, who's also stole my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Although, after that trial, I invited her back here and we had dinner together. And now we're the best of friends. Oh, <laughs> what a lovely tale. Yes! Now by bump into her on the street, she runs away as fast as she can. Oh. And I chase after her down the back alleys. <laughs> Interesting idea of friendship. And then I like to have the latest color of smoke grenade I've developed. Oh. And there are so many beautiful colors in the world, Ginny wants me to make a whole rainbow. I suppose this means you've let Miss Lestrade keep the smoke grenade launcher, have you? Yes, that's right. I got bored of it anyway. Hurley always reacts the same way when I shoot him with it now. <laughs> Poor Hurley. Oh, I can't wait.
wait for Ginny to arrive. It's been too long since she last came over. I'm so excited. I just hope she does actually come. Okay, living with Shoms. I'm sure you've been wondering why it is that I live here with Hurley, haven't you? Well, it has crossed my mind. That and where are your real parents? My mummy and daddy aren't with me anymore. Mummy passed away when I was born. And at around the same time, my father... Well, he had to go to a faraway land because of one of the cases he and Hurley were working on. Oh. Wait a minute. Did you say... he and Hurley? Yes. Daddy and Hurley were always solving mysteries. Mysterious cases together. She didn't mention that before. He wrote them all up in his diaries. That's what's in the metal chest over there. Really? He recorded them all? So, you mean it's true. Mr. Sholmes really did have a partner with whom he tackled some of his most taxing cases. Oh, yes. I mean, it's always nice to have one, isn't it? So Mr. Sholmes' partner was your father. Exactly! Hurley told me I wasn't allowed to look in the chest, but that only made me want to look even more. So I opened it up. And found your father's memoirs. Yes, so I asked Hurley, who wrote these? He nearly fell off his chair. But then he told me, that's when I found out that Arthur of all, the, of all those accounts was my father. So Iris's father was Mr. Sholmes' partner. I practically lived with Hurley all my life. I was tiny when he took me in. So it came as quite as a... Uh, so it came as quite a shock. When Hurley told me he wasn't really my daddy, I mean. It must have done. I wonder why Mr. I wonder why Mr. Sholmes told chose to tell you. And at such a young age. Hurley says it's because he wouldn't have been able to hide it from me. Huh? Well, having lived with Hurley all these years, you might say that his ways have rubbed off on me. There are some things I can just... see. Especially lies. I almost know when people are lying before they open their mouths sometimes. Right. Anyway, I was so fascinated when I read Daddy's diaries. That's what inspired me to write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes, actually. I always assumed Mr. Sholmes, is, Mr. Sholmes simply told you all those thrilling stories. Oh no, Hurley's hopeless like that. He forgets everything. As soon as he solved cases, it all but vanishes from his mind. Oh, I see. The other day, it was so embarrassing. As usual, he totally forgot about the case he just solved. So the very next day, he gathered together all of the people involved and proceeded to solve the case again. It was quite a shock for everyone. He can say that again. You share your father's surname, don't you, Iris? That's right. Wilson. Daddy's Dr. John H. Wilson. But Dr. John H. Wilson's dead, isn't he? I learned from his diaries that he's a doctor of medicine, you see. That's what prompted me to study and study so that I could earn a doctorate as well. Iris's father. Who went to some distant land. And is a doctor by the name of John H. Wilson. Oh, shit. 
The court will now hear the trial of Yunosuke Naruhodo. Kindly state before the court the name of the victim in this case. The victim's name was... Dr. John H. Wilson. That's right. Visiting professor of medicine at Imperial Yume University. And the man who, in the most bizarre of circumstances, lost his life just before we left Japan. Miss Susato. Yes. Perhaps we shouldn't pursue this conversation any further at this time. I think that would be for the best. Ah, uh, my dear fellows, how good to see you. <laughs> He's so hot. <laughs> it is like... <laughs> it is casual clothing. I can't, I can't. Oh my god. Ah! Mr. Mr. Sholmes. Whatever did you not... Why ever did you not make your presence known to me before? <sighs> well, no matter now. So, how the devil are you? We've... been with you for most of the day. Goodness, really? Do tell me, Mr. Sholmes, is your violin unscathed? Hmm, my violin? Whatever are you talking about, dear madam? Oh, um... Never mind that now. I have something far more interesting to show you. Behold, my dear fellows. Oh, another music box disc. No, not another disc, Miss Usato. This is the one Gregson demanded we hand over as evidence. Mr. McGill did's disc. Who oh am I? Then... Then what's it doing here? <laughs> you know at times, Mr. Nohodo. I think that, though, I have an undeniable turn for detection. I may well be even more adept at larceny. <laughs> Ooh, that would be wonderfully exciting. I'd be your pickpocketing assistant. And Runo could be our go-to lawyer if we ever got caught. Right. Plus, Susie has such beautiful handwriting, she could write all our menacing crime notifications. Yes, I'd be delighted. Oh my god. I'm just going to pretend this conversation never happened, I think. I, uh, I I don't understand. H how did that disc come to be in your possession? I thought Inspector Gregson took it back to Scotland Yard. Don't tell me he replicated it from memory. Quite correct. And the sort of uncompromising attitude is precisely why I always carry some of this. That's a bar of caramel, Mr. Sholmes. Your one and only friend in times of loneliness, if I'm not mistaken. If you will humor me, my dear fellows. Cast your minds back to when the good detective confiscated the disc. Don't tell me you took an imprint with caramel. I'll be taking whatever it is of Mr. McGilded's down to the yard. Thank you very much. So hand it over. Oh, yes, of course. If the police demand something as evidence, my dear fellow, we have no choice but to capitulate. It's all yours, Inspector. For the briefest of moments, I had the disc in my hand, did I not? Yes. Y yes, you did. But I still don't understand. It was at precisely that moment that I summoned my one and only friend into action. I pressed the disc into the pair... I pressed the disc into a pair of bars, like this. Yeah, he took an imprint. Oh my god. That's... That, that's amazing. The disc and all the minuscule protrusions have 
made an image in the caramel. Indeed, this caramel is quite exceptional. I developed it myself, you know. Suitably soft for making impressions, but resistant to melting. The result of precisely controlled solution. How <laughs> extraordinary. Carrying a pair of these on one's person frequently proves very useful indeed. Take a house key, for example. A simple press in its unique form is duplicated. I can enter anyone's property at will, and never without high sucrose nourishment. Yes, it sounds illegal. From the image, I was able to create this. I confess I was most curious to know what manner of music would issue from the disc when played. Yo, let's listen to it. I really want to hear it. That's all I could think about. Do tell us, Mr. Sholmes, what music does the disc play? Well, unfortunately, I have no idea. No idea? None whatsoever. Are you familiar with the workings of the music box, dear fellows? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, goodness, you don't know, Bruno. I love music boxes. They're so pretty and twinkly. Inside a music box, there's a special metal piece called a comb, and that's what produces the sound. Small protuberances pluck the different teeth of the comb as they rotate past it, making the different notes. The first music box is to be invented using used a rotating cylinder with protuberances on it. But over time, a new type of player was produced, which uses discs such as these. With that development, the popularity of music boxes spread far and wide, all around the globe. Why exactly? Because the discs are easy to produce and can be interchanged to facilitate the playing of different tunes. There are a great many firms in Europe now manufacturing music boxes as a result. I'm just snoozing away behind me. I don't think... Yeah, I don't think the noise gate will capture it. It is wonderful to be able to enjoy music even when no performer is present. But it is the very success of the invention that means we are now presented with an insurmountable problem. What do you mean? As you may imagine, the construction of one firm's music box does not match that of another. And we have no way of knowing in which music box this particular disc was designed to be played. There is no resolution to this problem, I'm afraid. It's quite intractable. Ah, oh, I see. So that's why. Naturally, I tested the disc in those few music boxes I have at my disposal. But as you can hear, to no avail. The results were equally unsatisfactory in this one. So, I am presently engaged in acquiring an example of all the music boxes ever made in Europe. Uh, every single one? That's early for you, always taking things too far. But my dear girl, an unsolved riddle is quite repugnant to my constitution. But surely all the different types in Europe will amount to a huge volume of music boxes, won't it? Hmm, yes, that is certainly true. In the worst case, I shall just have to ask you to vacate the attic room. What? <laughs> okay, what about Magnus? Magnus Mc... Oh, Magnus McGilded. Not a name I expected to hear again so soon. Yes, it's only been two months since that grisly case. Mr. McGilded perished within hours of the trial's conclusion. Was it the curse of the Reaper? No one knows, still now. The omnibus... 
the omnibus was reduced to a pile of ash. Not a shred of evidence remained. And with the man's death, the truth about the murder in which he was so intimately involved was buried. Even though we successfully established Mr. McGilded's innocence in the trial, the newspapers are still claiming that it remains an unsolved case. The murder of the brickmaker, Mr. Thrice Fired Mason. In the end, the truth of the matter remains a mystery. We still have no idea what actually happened that night. And although Mr. McGilded was found not guilty through my defense, I still don't know if that was the right judgment or not. It would appear the case is not yet closed. Well, it's time I start getting things ready for dinner, I think. Ginny will be here before long. Thank you, Iris. Oh, well, you must let me help you then. Of course, Susie. There's plenty to do. I think I shall investigate the condition of my faithful performing partner. Now then, where did I leave it? Let this be a lesson to you, Mr. Sholmes. Never leave anything too precious with the pawnbroker. Hmm, yes. You may be right. Oh, that reminds me. Of something Mr. Windebank said before. He said that he had a manuscript of irises in pawn, didn't he? Did he? Yes, he definitely mentioned it. Mr. Sholmes' latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom were his words, I believe. So you heard about that, did you? I expect you were as incensed as I was. Oh yes, the idea of such a wonderful story languishing in Mr. Windebank's storeroom gathering dust. My dear madam, I'm quite sure I told you already. The pawnbroker's storeroom is the safest place for it, more secure than a bank's vault. And what about your Stradivarius, Hurley? Was that safe and secure? Well, there may be the occasional mix-up. Caused by a certain impetuous someone not too far from me now. Do you have any idea how long it took me to write that Baskerville story, Hurley? No, oh, it sounds so exciting. The Hound of the Baskervilles. I should love to read it. What's going on here? Why does it feel like an icy chill just swept through the room? Susie, what did you just say? Um... You said Hound of the Baskervilles. But how could you know the full title? Well, uh, that's... That's because Miss Susato is such a great fan of all the stories about Mr. Sholmes, of course. But Runo, Hound of the Baskervilles, has never been published. What? When I showed Hurley the manuscript, he told me that I wasn't allowed to publish it yet. I don't understand. That's why he said that he'd keep it safe. Until it was the right time for the story to be made public, you see. So that's why the manuscript is at Windebanks. And yet, how could Susie here know its title? Well, Hurley, what's going on? Ah. What is it, Mr. Sholmes? It would appear our guest has arrived. Miss Lestrade.
This was a bad idea. I knew I weren't welcome. I'm going. Blah, 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 blah. No, wait, Miss Lestrade. You've all been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Haven't we, Iris? Oh, yes. Just wait there, Ginny. We'll have everything ready in a jiffy. Come along, Susie. <laughs> right, of course. It's a pleasure to see you here, Miss Lestrade. Please, make yourself at home. Don't stand in the doorway, my dear girl. Come along in. What say you to some... Mendel... Les Mendelssohn? I won't take no for an answer. Mendelssohn it is, then. That evening, Iris prepared us all a meal that was even more delicious than usual. Mr. Sholmes's violin performance was in no way meddlesome. And Gina, as we came to call her, taught us all how to steal things from one another without being noticed. <laughs> so funny. Everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves well into the night. Back up in the attic. That was a very enjoyable evening, wasn't it? Oh yes, Iris's cooking was truly divine. And I feel as though I can still hear the enchanting strains of Mr. Sholmes' violin even now. I wonder if it's supposed to be like the little bits of violin I'm hearing, but yeah, I would have loved to hear him. Because all we heard was that awful playing in the morning. Best of all, I bet I could steal the glasses from his lordship's face next time we're in court. <laughs> Don't do that, Susano. I would love to see it, but oh my god, you would... Oh, that is... She's got balls, I'll give her that. Committing, like, what? Larceny right in court? So funny. <laughs> Naruhoto-san, could I consult with you about something, I wonder? I wonder if it's that, um, she did get a telegram. And she wouldn't show it to us, so... What's the matter, Susato-san? It's uh, about the telegram I received. Ah. The one that arrived first thing this morning, I suppose. I've... I've been summoned. What? Summoned? What do you mean? The telegram was from the Lord Chief Justice's office. Lord Strongheart has asked to see me. The Lord Chief Justice. When? Tomorrow morning. What? Then, then we have to start preparing at once. Oh, no, that won't be necessary, Naruhoto-san. I've been summoned alone. Alone? What on earth for? I have no idea. I suppose I shall find out tomorrow. What's all this about? Whatever it is, it's making me feel very uneasy. Didn't he have a surprise for us? 
Oh, who could that be, I wonder? Oh, it's Iris. <laughs> Good evening, friends. Ah, Iris. Hello again. Oh. And Gina, too. Yes. Ginny's gonna... Ginny's going to stay with us tonight. She's going to sleep in with me. Isn't that right, Ginny? Well, yeah. How <laughs> lovely. Let me make a pot of tea. You know, I've learned so much today. Oh, what? In particular. All those things Ginny showed us. Wasn't it wonderful? Ah, you mean all those pickpocketing techniques. We had fun trying them out on each other, didn't we? I think I've awakened a natural talent. I could earn a living from it. You might be getting ahead of yourself a little there. So, what brings you up to our humble quarters at this late hour? Well, you see... I came to return this. Wait, what? That's... that's mine! Oh my, however did you... I told you, didn't I? I have a natural talent for it. Oh yes, I'd forgotten. Iris literally is a child genius. So anyway, here, you can have it back. Not that I really understand why you wear it, though. Ah, thank you. Alright then, good night. Yes, good night. Hmm, so this is your office, is it? What do you think, Ginny? I think I wouldn't fancy me chances with a loyal what? What lives in a place like this? Yes, me too. <laughs> it seems as though Iris here still has something she'd like to talk about. I suppose she probably wants to talk about the manuscript. Yes, I suppose she probably does. Do we see Gina in this room? Oh, she's right over there. Gina looks very pensive over there. Are you alright, Gina? Eh? Uh, I was just thinking. That's all. Oh, I wouldn't fancy me chances with a lawyer what lives in a place like this. Yes, you did mention that already. Get off, did I? Well, nothing else really springs to mind, that's why. What's wrong with this room exactly? I like it. Okay, we will go back and talk to Iris. Iris, I... I suppose you're hoping to talk about the manuscript, aren't you? Aren't you going to tell me? I'm so sorry. I need a little more time, please. Alright, I understand. I hope I haven't made you feel awkward. Oh no, not at all, Iris. Not at all. I don't know what all this is about really, but... It's a story you've made up, is it, Iris? This mantle script, or whatever you call it. It's not exactly a story that I made up. It's something I read in Daddy's diaries. Daddy's? That's right. I don't suppose I mentioned it to you before, Ginny, but... My Daddy was Holy's assistant once. His partner. Eh? And they solved all sorts of strange and mysterious cases together. Is... is that right, mister? Apparently so. I was as surprised as you are, though. And Daddy wrote all the details of every single case down, you see, in his diaries. So I studied them and write my stories based on what actually happened. 
So what's your old man now? So where's your old man now then? He had to go away on an urgent business to a faraway land and he'll be gone for a very long time. So uh, I've never really met him. Oh, right. Come to think of it. I don't know anything about Gina's parents either. Perhaps we should ask her. Oh, love this. I've always wanted to know. Do you think we could go ask her right now? Yeah. I've realized that I don't know anything about your parents, Gina. I ain't got any, have I? Never did have. Oh. Look, the East End's full of orphans like me. No one wants nothing to do with us from the minute we're born, not even our mums. But we all stick together. The older ones look after the little ones and make sure they get by. So that's why you're a pickpocket. Nah, diving's my life. I love it. I get a kick out of it every time I lift some pompous idiot's purse. And that's how we all afford to eat. I'm like Robin Hood, aren't I? That's how I see it. Oh, Gina. I do think about it sometimes. What it'd be like to our parents, I mean. I always thought it'd make everything not right. But Evan listened to what Iris just said. Sounds like Evan's parents ain't always easy either. Oh. I mean, if you know you never had him, you don't feel like you're always wanting to meet him. It's true. I do want to see Daddy so much. Oh, Iris. Damn, okay. Who's cutting the onions around here? Iris, this Hound of the Baskerville story. I take it that it's another tale inspired by your father's accounts. That's right. I thought it was fascinating. But it's different somehow. From the other cases, I mean. Oh? How? I don't really know. But it must be special in some way. Because after I'd written it and I showed the manuscript to Hurley, he turned as white as a sheet. It was the first time I'd ever seen him like that. It pains me to have to say this after you've toiled over it for so long, Iris. But this story must not be published at this time, under any circumstances. Why not? It's one of my best works. I'm not at liberty to say, not now, so please do not ask me. All right then, I won't. But I do solemnly swear that I will explain everything one day, Iris, when the time is right. And that's how the manuscript came to be with Mr. Windermank, isn't it? Yes. Early said it had to be somewhere very safe. That really gets my goat, that does. He's, he's treating you like a child. It's mean that what it is, keeping secrets like that. I'm sure Mr. Sholmes isn't trying to be mean. Eh? If he said he wasn't at liberty to talk about it, I'm sure there must have been a very good reason. I think so, too. You lot are too trusting for your own good. But he can't pull the wool over my eyes. Sholmes is lying to Iris. I bet my life on it. What? Ellie's lying to me. 
Bro, don't do that. Her, like, only father figure right now. There's nothing else to talk about. Or I guess I talked to Gina about it. There we go. Gina, what did you mean when you said that you know Mr. Sholmes is lying to Iris? Ellie Brackenzie popped that mental script or whatever, right? But come on, that's obviously a load of rubbish. Oh my, why would you think that, Gina? It's simple. If that story was simply an old Winterbank storeroom, there's no way someone from halfway around the world, in other words, you, could know about it. Ugh. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. But Hurley would never do something like that. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Grown-ups do a lot worse than that, believe me. They're faced liars, a lot of them. You just ain't realized it yet. I'm telling you. That mental script ain't at Winterbanks. You'd soon see if you'd add a look. Even if you think you can trust him, I don't. That Shams is a lie like the rest of them. If I'm honest, I have wondered if Hurley's telling me the truth sometimes. See? Oh, but I, I don't mean that I think he sold it. I mean that I sometimes wonder if he might have hidden my manuscript somewhere, somewhere I don't know. Even though it's wrong of me to doubt him. Don't be too hard on yourself, Iris. Oh my goodness, look at the time. Come along, Ginny. We should go back downstairs. Yeah, alright. And please, don't mention any of this to Hurley, will you? No, of course not. Good night then, Iris. Good night, Gina. You must let me make breakfast for you tomorrow morning. I insist. Oh, yes, please. I can't wait, Susie. Good night then. Iris... It sure is easy to forget, isn't it? Sometimes she speaks just like an adult. But deep down, she's still just a child. Well, I think it's time that I tuned in for the night. I turned in for the night too, Narahoda-san. Dr. John H. Wilson, Iris's father. But also, the name of the murdered visiting professor at Yume University. It can't be a mere coincidence. There's something deeper going on. Mr. Narahodo. Someone's saying Master Narahodo. Mr. Narahodo. That voice. That's Mr. Sholmes. God, he's so hot. What's going on? It's the middle of the night. It's Miss Lestrade. She's gone. Gina. She was supposed to be sleeping in Iris's room, but her bed is empty. Well, she's an independent young woman. She probably decided to go home, no? She probably took the music disc. I think not. From speaking to her before she retired, I received the distinct impression that she was looking forward to breakfasting. To break... Breakfasting with Miss Sato. No, I don't believe the girl has gone home, but I've been waiting for over an hour now. Over an hour? Oh... You'll indulge me. Look out of the window, my dear fellow. What's this about?
Oh, is she in the there? Wait a minute. Why is there a light on at this time of night? That's Mr. Windebank's pawnbrokery. Mr. Windebank's? Oh no. It's simple. That story was really in old Windebank's. Oh god, no. It's simple if that story was really in old Windebank's storeroom. That there's no way someone from halfway around the world, in other world, in other words, you could know about it. Sorry, Iris, but if you ask me, he sold it. Without telling you. Could Gina have gone? Also, heads up, we have ads in about four and a half minutes. It seems you have some knowledge of the situation, Mr. Naruhodo. Uh, sorry? Oh, no, no, not really. Well, anyway, we must investigate. Huh? Once. Miss Usado. I hope nobody dies, but then again, there wouldn't be an investigation unless somebody did die. The door to Windebanks. It's open. And the lamp is burning. Must be Gina, mustn't it? Let us hope it's nothing more sinister. What? Come, there's not a moment to lose. Clearly, something is afoot inside. There's no one here. Oh, yes. There is. Ah! Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes! What the? Has Sholmes been shot? No way, if they do me like that, they can't do me like that. Leave me, Mr. Naruhodo. But... After them, go! Right. Blast! I've lost them. Hello, hello, what have we here? The alarm was just raised from the spawn broker, sir. Would you know something about that? Officer, come with me. It's my friend, Mr. Sholmes. He's been shot. Shot? With the policeman close behind me, I ran back to Windebanks. <gasps> no! Uh, Mr. Sholmes! Mr. Narado! How bad is it? Uh, never mind me, but there's much at stake. Behind that door. Uh. In the storeroom. Uh. Hurry! No way. No fucking way. Oh my god. I can't believe that just happened. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, this... This is so... This is so spicy. Oh my god. The drama. I feel like I'm in a K-drama. Ah. I'll be all right, Mr. Naruhodo. After them. Go. Find that door. In the storeroom. Hurry. Gina? It's... It's Gina. 
No way they planted the gun in her hand. From that moment, when DeBank's pawnbrokery became a crime scene, everything that followed happened in a whirlwind of activity. The arrival of the police, the preliminary investigation of the scene, and the questioning. It was just before dawn before I was allowed back to my lodgings at 221B. Oh my god. I had to snooze the ads because it was so dramatic. Oh my god! Okay, time to run the ads. That's gonna be another three minutes and then we will continue this game. Gives me time to digest the shock of watching that cutscene. Go get some water, get some snacks, I don't know. It's almost dinner for me, so I'll probably end in like half an hour, but I will see you once the break is over. Oh, oh my god. You know what? It makes sense. Because I knew somebody had to die. I was not expect- I'm not surprised it's the pawnbroker, but I wasn't expecting it. Um, what I was not expecting was Gina to be framed for the murder. I mean, of course, there's somebody we have to defend, but like, oh my god, it's time. But yeah, my, f no, no, my throat's feeling a little rough, but it's mostly my nose. My nose is very itchy. It always happens I think it's because it like buzzes while I do vo certain voices and so it like just itches my nose. I don't know if we'll ever get to see that doll have its other eye colored. Maybe that'll be like a nice little touch at the end of the game or at the um, end of the next one. Uh, no, I think I'll be fine. I was debating on going to the bathroom, but I think I'll be fine since I'm not going to stream for much longer. But, oh, that was so spicy. Okay. I forget. How old is everybody? Oh my god, Susato's only 16? What about, um... What about me? How old am I? Am I also around 16? I'm probably a bit older, maybe? I don't know. Sholmes is 34. You know what? Sholmes is literally a dilf. <laughs> He's... He practically has a kid that's Iris, you know? He's pretty much a DILF. He's also a detective, so he's a double DILF. <laughs> I can't believe that sentence just came out of my mouth. Anyways, Iris is 10. When DeBank is 48, he is dead. Gina is 17. Oh, she's the same age as Susato. Okay. Well, almost same age. She's older, actually. Oh. Egbert Benedict, age unknown. Who knows how old this man is? I don't know. He does remind me of an egg, though. Tobias Gregson is 44. I find it funny that how I'm not in the person lineup. All right. 30 seconds left. Oh, wow. I'm feeling a little cold in here. Uh, uh. I think it's time to bust out more layers or turn uh turn on the heater. That is the word. Yes, that is the English word used for warming oneself up with a device. Heater. Although I probably should just start off with closing my window, but I'm too lazy right now. Okay, a couple more seconds and the ads are done. Welcome back. Bust what? Bust out more layers. Because it is cold. I need to bundle up more. I don't know. I feel like I've become a frail little old lady because I cannot tolerate the cold whatsoever. I'm not busting a nut. <laughs> Maybe if Sholmes appears on the screen again. All right. Narrow Hodel's illegal consultancy. Oh. No, my ear was hurting a little bit. I think it was just the earbud was sitting a bit funny. Okay, continue. 
Oh, Iris. A telegram came, but all it said was, wait at home. Oh, yes, we asked one of the policemen to have it sent. It was simply impossible to come back. I woke up. I was all alone. Hurley and Ginny were gone. Everyone was gone. What happened, Runo? Poor Iris. She's trembling. She's obviously trying very hard not to let herself get too worried. Like, seeing her like- She's so sad, guys. I need to, like, I need to hug her. She's- Oh my god. I'll explain everything that I know. Something awful has happened, hasn't it? Yes, I'm afraid so. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, Iris, but Mr. Windebank is dead. He was shot. We discovered it in the early hours of the morning. Oh, yes, I, I had a feeling. You did? Well, I saw all of those police carriages pulling up outside his shop. So I knew something must have happened there. When we entered Windabanks in the small hours, we disturbed a gang of two thugs. They ran out of the street. Oh, they ran out onto the street and I chased after them, but... They got away. So, it was one of them who shot Mr. Winterbank, I suppose. I don't know, but that's not what the police believe at the moment. Oh, why not? They've arrested someone else as their prime suspect, you see. Gina. Uh, G Ginny? But why? Well, the thing is... No! Ginny wouldn't do something like that. I know, I know. None of us think she did it. Then why had they arrested her? I'm sorry. There was nothing I could do. God. Could you imagine your... I don't know about best friend, but like your friend gets arrested. Your father figure gets shot. I don't know what's happening with Susato, but like, wow. At 10 years old, the world would feel like it's ending. Oh my god. So where's Hurley then? Is he still there investigating the scene? He really ought to have some breakfast. It's not good for him to miss meals. I don't want you to worry, Iris, but I have some bad news about Mr. Sholmes. He was taken to the hospital this morning. What? Well, uh, uh when we entered Windabanks, a, a gun was fired and he took a bullet. Hurley uh, uh, was shot. No, no. no. It's- it's- it's all right. His life isn't in danger. Really? Are you sure? Where is he? Which hospital? He's- he's at St. Sinners. They're tending to him there. <laughs> Sinners? I must see him at once. I'm sorry, Iris, but you can't. Why not? That's not fair. I'm a family member. I should be allowed. No, I mean, nobody can see him at the moment. Oh my god, he's not in surgery, is he? Oh. Ah, yeah, okay. He's not allowed any visitors. They're preparing to operate, you see. Did the bullet not go through him? To... to operate? Oh, poor Hurley. It was the two thugs who were in Mr. Windebank's shop. They shot Mr. Shones when he disturbed when we disturbed them, you see. It was pitch black inside the shop at the time. My mind went totally blank, I'm afraid. I I just froze. 
after them. Go! After that, I ran out into the street, but... Well, they were long gone. I... I shouldn't have hesitated. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I let them get away. I think that's a very good thing. Sorry? Well, if you'd seen which way they went and chased after them... You might have been shot as well, Runa. On top of everything else, I... I couldn't bear that. Oh, Iris. Oh! Somebody give her a hug! Where's Susie, Runa? She's still at the police station. Oh, why? I expect she's still being questioned. The police said they wouldn't be finished for a while. Why aren't you there, then? Well, I didn't get a good look at the criminals anyway, so they weren't questioning me for long. And Miss Susato stayed behind at the scene to tend to, Shom to Mr. Shom, so they didn't get started until later. Oh, I see. Besides... One of us had to come back to be with Iris. I'm glad Inspector Gregson agreed to me leaving early. You should have let me know and I would have come to the station. I don't understand why they arrested Ginny. It's not fair. What about the two thugs that were at the scene? Why aren't they the prime suspects? After all... They shot Hurley dead, didn't they? No, I I mean, Mr. Sholmes isn't dead, Iris. Oh, this is all so horrible. The thing is, Mr. Windebank was found on the floor in the storeroom where he keeps all the deposited articles. The storeroom door was locked from the inside. I see. But he wasn't alone in there. Gen Gino was found next to him on the floor as well. And according to the detectives who investigated afterwards. Don't tell me. There's no one else in the room. Yes, exactly. How did you know? It's the only explanation. Yes, the only explanation indeed. What do you mean by that, Runo? Well? Uh, what can I say? I'm damned if I agree. Damned if I don't. I'm afraid I'll need to go out again now, Iris. <gasps> Can she come with me? Can she be my little psychic buddy? There's not much I can do at the moment, but I can at least try to find out how Mr. Sholmes and Gina are getting on. I want to go too. Take me with you, Runo. Hell yeah! Woo! It's like when I get to take Pearl with me, it's so much fun. I can't stand just sitting around here waiting. I'm not sure how I would feel about taking a ten-year-old child to the scene of a murder. It's okay, Phoenix did it, and she was fine. But I don't want to leave her here all alone, either. All right then, Iris. Perhaps you can help me. Oh, yes, I'd love to. Jean is at the prison. Mr. Sholmes is... probably in his hospital bed. And don't forget, we have to visit the crime scene. We need to conduct a thorough investigation. <laughs> I can see you're ready for action. I imagine Iris would appreciate going to the hospital sooner rather than later. Yeah, that's our that's our very first stop. Um, I don't know if she'll have any added dialogue. Um, if I were to inspect something. So this is the tea set that Miss Susado. Let's hope. Ah, yeah. Okay, she does say something. Susie's lovely green tea has had quite an impact on Hurley, you know. He stopped putting milk and sugar in his coffee, even. And Hurley is normally bitterly opposed to bitterness. <laughs> That's funny. Greetings, salutations, many given jubilations. Hello, Umbrella, how are you doing today? That spade has been in here since we started renting the place. You know, that's not a spade, it's a shovel. Ah, you're a shoveler, are you? I had a feeling you'd pick up on that. Oh, no. A pig is something else entirely. 
now I've dug myself into an even deeper hole. But I'm... It's spring at last, and the weather is warmer now. But I love the smell of the fire and the steam rising from the kettle. Oh, how about some tea, Bruno? Oh my god, she has a little flask. It's so cute. Thanks, Iris, but I'm alright for now. But the green tea Susada-san makes me from time to time, and Iris's unique herbal infusions. This place is paradise for a true tea lover. If you're sure, you know I always have plenty whenever you're feeling thirsty. I'm good. Took the foster baby to her favorite restaurant. Ooh. Do you mean like quite literally foster baby? A baby you foster? You've only been here in London for about two months, but my desk is starting to look a little messy already. Ellie's desk is far worse, you know. I'm sure if I try hard enough, I can make my desk as messy as Mr. Sholmes. Hmm, I wonder. You don't think I can? Well, it takes a certain genius to reach that level of disorder, you know. Hmm, path to true mess is long and arduous, it seems. I'm not messy, I'm just a genius. <laughs> a two-year-old. Ooh, okay. That's cute. I hope they I hope she ate lots. I always forget how capable a child is at two. Like I forget, like two years old, they can already be like walking and talking by then. Like it's yeah, it's insane. <laughs> I forget about that. Ah, the Daruma doll I brought with me from home, still with only one eye colored in. I said I'd color the other eye once I won my first court case here in Britain, but... That's cruel, only letting it have one eye. Yes, but it's because I don't consider myself a good enough lawyer yet, you see. Once I become a fully-fledged lawyer, Miss Usado will color in the other eye for me. Well, in that case, why not color in the other eye now? And then every time you win a new case, give it an extra eye. <laughs> oh my god. It would start looking like one of those, like, angels with, like, the, all the, all the, like, the dozens of eyes. You can never have too many eyes, you know. Call me crazy, but I'd never considered that. <laughs> That's funny. It's insane how slow humans are growing up to be aged. Most mammals at that point are adults. That's true. Yeah... Somehow, um, evolution looked at us and decided to let us live. Okay. Oh, can I look at the telegram? She's not here. Oh, this looks like a telegram. It is, but you mustn't open it. Not under any circumstances. All right, I won't. Now then, let's see. <laughs> She's got x-ray vision, doesn't she? No, what did I just say? You mustn't open it. Don't worry, I won't. With this special concoction I've developed, I'll be able to see through the envelope without having to open it. No, that's not allowed either. Oh, but I'm sure it's something important. Little geniuses sure can be mischievous. You know, I've never seen inside Miss Susato's room. I haven't so much as put my head around the door. Oh, Susie often invites me up. It's so much fun. Really? What's her room like? I can't tell you that. Oh. A young maiden's private chamber is a place of bittersweet secrets, you know. Where have I heard that before? I suppose some things are the same the world over. Okay, aquarium. We were rather lucky to find that old aquarium left behind here. The prawns we put in there are doing rather well, and the anemones too. Apparently, tanks like those were very popular in London before I was born. Oh, you mean they're not anymore? I think people discovered it was too much effort to clean them out and change the water all the time. 
I can believe that. Prawns and anemones are fun. For a while. I need to, um... I've been meaning to get some creatures for my tank to help with... To keep the algae under control. I need to look into that. It's because I haven't decided on what I specifically want. Because I could go with something simple like shrimps. And then I think there are also some like specific fishes you can get that will like like stick to your glass and like crawl around and eat the algae, but we'll see. I considered snails. I don't remember if snails help with algae, but no, because they eat plants and I have plants in there and they would eat everything. All right, let's move. Okay, we are going to the hospital first. Yeah. I'd rather go there first. Because even though Iris is a bunch of pixels, I still worry for her. Hurry. Oh. He's not here. No, that's strange. The nurse definitely said he was in the bed by the window, didn't she? Oh, I know what's probably happened. Ellie was being a big baby and the bullet wound wasn't that bad after all, so he's been sent home. Mm, I'm not so sure about that, baby or not. There's no question that it was a fairly serious injury that Mr. Shome suffered. Oh. Hello, hello, what have we here? Oh, this is the... This ward is off limits, no visiting. So what are you doing in here, eh? Well, I'll have you know. We're Hurley's next of kin. Eh? Oh, well, begging your pardon then, ma'am. Sir. A little lady and a curious eastern gentleman. A great mystery solver as a mysterious family, eh? If that's how you see us, um, sure. Where is he, constable? Where's Hurley? I believe he's currently in the operating theater, ma'am. Undergoing an extensive operation. Extensive? It has been several hours since he went in. Oh, shit. Oh, dear. Is he going to be alright? Well, it doesn't appear to be working, you see. The anesthetic, that is. Oh. I have heard a report that the gentleman claims he may have had a little too much to drink last night. Coffee, that is. <sighs> anyway, I think it would be fair to assume that he won't be back here for several hours yet. I see. Thank you, Constable. Perhaps we should leave and come back later. Oh, poor Hurley. Damn, and all this time I thought maybe he was like hiding behind this curtain, but no, he's literally being operated on. Uh, can I look at anything? Oh, this is no fun. I can't really look at anything here. What's this? There's a notice board on the wall here. Look, let's see. What does it say? Thought of the day. On seeing any vermin, calmly and discreetly inform matron. Oh, yes. They have rats and mice in hospitals like this that love to feast on all the medicine. You don't deal with them. There's nothing left to treat the patients. Rats and mice? Oh, I see. This is a rather old building, I suppose. But the doctors and nurses are all very good, I hear. I certainly hope so, for Mr. Sholmes' sake. This must be Mr. Sholmes' bed. Poor Hurley. I know. It looks as stiff as a board, doesn't it? Oh, I don't think that will bother him. No? I often find him asleep face down on the floor, completely dead to the world. <laughs> that sounds like him. I think I'd call the police if I discovered someone like that. He must do it very often, are these crutches? Maybe he'll be using them. I wonder what these are. Do you have any idea, Iris? Oh, haven't you ever seen crutches before? Let me explain. They're for people with leg injuries. Helps them walk. 
You hold one under each arm, you see. Oh. Right. I thought they were weapons of some sort. Why would there be weapons in a hospital? I, I thought maybe a fighter had been injured in a battle contest and been brought here along with his weapons. That's surprisingly plausible. Okay, well I guess next is Gina then. Off to the prison. Okay, 16th of April. Local prison cell 13. Hello, Gina. I like how they let her keep that in the prison. It's so funny. Like, there's no way they still have- they let her keep that. Like, there's no way they put this girl in prison and let her keep the smoke grenade launcher. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, you still have the grenade launcher, Holy and I made. I wish he wouldn't point it at me all the time, though. What are you here for? Jenny? I have a feeling it's because of us that you've ended up in trouble. So we were thinking that we might be able to help you. Well, you can't. Sorry? You erred. Get lost. Don't be like that, Ginny. I know you didn't do it. You'd never shoot someone. I just know you wouldn't. You think you know me? Pull the other one. Oh. You ain't got the first idea about the likes of me. I'm a thief. I pinch people's purses when they're walking down the street. That's how I get by. And if I saw me chance, I'd sneak into a pawn shop any day of the week. Just to see what I could lay me hands on. Get it? That's the kind of person I am. But, but Ginny... I'll be in court tomorrow. They said... Some cove came back before, by before and said he'd be a lawyer for me or the like. It was my right or something. But I told him to get stuffed. I don't need no lawyer. I don't need no one. She couldn't be staring at me anymore, obviously, if she tried. Why are you being like this, Ginny? I don't understand, Gina. Why did you send the public defender away? He wanted me to sign some papers, representation papers or something like that. It's all gonna be bricked anyway, the whole trial. They'll pin it on me because I'm a kid. That's what grown-ups always do. Why do you think that? Because that's how it's always been for me, growing up in the back slums me whole life. If you do what the grown-ups tell you, it'll get your mates dragged off by the coppers, or worse. I've had it happen to me before and all, been sold out and nearly snaffled on the back of it. You can't trust no one, that's the point. As soon as you do, you're gone to grass. Dead. Gina, listen. If you like, in tomorrow's trial, I could... Forget it! Ginny! Don't you trust Bruno? No, I don't. Look, I'll ask you nicely now. Just leave me alone. Will you tell us what happened, Gina? Last night at the pawnbrokers. There's nothing to tell. I figured it'd pay me, so I broke into the place and started going through the storeroom. But the old bloke wanted in on me, and you know the rest. But why, Ginny? Why would you do that? Ain't it obvious? The place is full of stuff I could sell for a shilling or two. Diving ain't easy, you know. It's a lot to work. And at the time, you don't even get nothing. Is that really why you broke into the place? What? Are you sure? The true reason wasn't something else. Oh, give it to rest. What'd be the point anyway, eh? Nothing I said. 
Nothing I could say could make the line bit difference. Please tell us, Ginny. We'll believe you, whatever it is. Believe me? Don't be daft. You can't believe nothing. Everyone lies all the time. And you know what? When it comes to liars, I'm the biggest of the lot. I've, I've told some unforgivable lies I have. What, what do you mean by that? What unforgivable lies? What did you mean before, Gina, when you said you were the biggest liar of the lot? Why don't you tell us what these unforgivable lies you've told are? Maybe we can help. Sorry. But at the time, they're gonna want to question me now. Ginny, please. Oh, yeah. I wanted to give you this. Something to remember me by. Is that her cat? Photographic print of a really adorable cat. I found it in one of the pockets of this coat. Ain't no point me having it. Oh, maybe this is what was important. I want. I wonder what a little photograph like that was doing in a pocket of that overcoat. Anyway, don't bother coming again. Bye. Oh, Ginny. I don't think there's... M no, I can't examine. Okay. Um... I guess we could go walk around Baker Street. And, like, examine. There's still a Scotland Yard carriage outside Windabanks. I never imagined we'd be investigating a case so close to home. Poor Iris. She's very upset by all this. I'm sorry. I was there. I should have done more. I know this is your fault, Bruno, so please don't apologize. But I... It's the criminals who are to blame for all of this. So let's investigate and work out how to catch them. Yes, you're right. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to move to the side. It's already been two months that we've been taking lodgings here above Mr. Sholmes' office. I still can't quite believe it. I never expected things would turn out like this. When Holy comes back home, let's have a big party. That's a great idea. I'm sure it won't be long. Mr. Sholmes is very tough. Yes. What if we go in the suite? I just want to see like all the different dialogue she has to say about everything. It's an unusual way to make use of a huge metal chest as a table for tea and coffee. But it is a very sturdy box, and I've noticed that it's always locked. Ah, oh, well, that's because... That box contains some of my most important things. Which you have no intention of telling me more about, judging from that guarded smile. The fire is burning comfortably in the grate again today. It's a very different feeling to a Japanese hibachi somehow. Harry's been working on his disguises recently. He's been dressing as a woman mainly. Oh, do uh, Sholmes dressed as a woman? I need to see this. Really? Mr. Sholmes? Dresses in women's clothes? Yes. You see the lady in that photographic print on the mantelpiece. That's Harry! <laughs> The picture of the woman that he would not talk about? <laughs> it's him? No. <laughs> no fucking way. Oh my god. This entire time. When he always dodged the question, it's because it's him in the photograph. <laughs> oh my god. 
He's quite stunning. Oh, isn't he always? Isn't he always? Oh my god. I'm in tears. But I love that. Okay. I'm glad I came back here. Now this really is Mr. Sholmes' faithful performing partner then. The Stradivar... The Strapiscar... The Scrapitharius... No, it's no good. It's gone. The virtuoso's violin that he found in a pawnbroker's and managed to buy for next to nothing. I hope Burley gets well soon. I miss hearing his violin playing already. Oh, Iris. I'm sure he will. I don't know where exactly he got shot. There's all sorts on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high I can't help feeling the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. Yes, Hurley does tend to overload the shelves. That's one way of putting it. He's wanted to look something up in one of those books the other day, you know? But it was so tightly crammed in, he gave up and went out to buy a brand new copy instead. Oh my god. Ah yes, the letters V and R inscribed on the wall. In bullet holes. Isn't it the initials of the Queen or something? That's right, but Hurley's... Hurley isn't a very good shot, sadly. I can't remember how many times he had to replaster that patch of wall before he managed to make the letters. <laughs> Iris is giving us all this tea and I'm here for it. It's so funny. So he mu he did multiple attempts trying to shoot this into the wall. That's so funny. Is he a patriot or a plasterer? So funny. I'm crying. Look at Mr. Sholmes' desk. It's completely clear. It looks totally different without the, that enormous machine on it. Early lives in an absolute mess all the time. He never notices when things go missing. Even Mr. Sholmes must have noticed that huge lump of metal is no longer there, surely. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I thought that was like part of... I thought that was like a different thing I could examine. Okay. Come to think of it, I haven't seen you doing much writing recently, Iris. There's paper already set up in the typewriter, I notice. As if you're about to start. I'm a little bit stuck for a new story idea, actually. Well, you could consider using what happened to Mr. Natsume, perhaps. Oh yes, that's a fabulous idea. And a great title has just popped into my head as well. The Adventure of the Catty Man. How's that, Runo? <laughs> oh, her little like chair and her footstool so cute that's a charming little white shelf and full of charming little bottles too but the contents of them aren't quite so charming it seems I'm so close now I've nearly developed a rainbow smoke grenade you know so you're still working on those colorful but funny explosives are you I tell you what, when I perfected it, I'll fire the first shot at you, Bruno. What an honor. I don't su- Well, I don't know. Were dyes readily available? I don't know if she's using dyes or like other things to color. This is where you note down ideas, isn't it, Iris? Let's see, what does it say today? Ah, the Boscom Valley Mystery. We visited Boscombe Valley recently for a picnic, you see, but I forgot to bring the tea. So when Hurley became thirsty, he decided to drink from Boscombe Pool. Gave himself an awful tummy ache. <laughs> oh dear. Hurley sat there miserable as can be in that field of flowers after that. Just like when you saw him yesterday. That really is an unsavory tale. I would not trust the lake or pool water to be, like, safe for drinking. Anyways, what does it say on that board? V is the sum of all PV- I don't- I don't know. I don't know what PV stands for. I just know the, the little sum notation there. 
These are all mementos of Mr. Sholmes' past cases, I think. If he'd been involved in my case, I wonder if the beef steak from the Carnival would be on display here. Ellie says that Waggy is a memento, too. What? How? He tried really hard to get the little fellow to stay on those shelves at first. But he had to give up in the end. Waggy just wouldn't keep still. Yes. Funny that. Your beautiful tea set is there on the table as usual. A cup of one of your special herbal plants always helps me to relax when I'm feeling the strain. Oh, Hurley. He hasn't had a drop of tea today. I wish I could take some to the hospital for him. Oh, is that what her thermos is for? I think I've looked at everything. It was very cute hearing Iris's input. I loved it. Okay, that should be everything. I'm gonna try going to the hospital again. I mean... I don't think I can go inside. I mean, I could try, but yeah, I think hospital again? No, he's still not here. Okay. Uh, my only option is to go into the... Into the... Well, I, I can try to go to the pawn broke shop. No, yeah, we can go, okay. We wanted to investigate anyway. Is Gregson gonna give me shit for bringing a 10 year old? This is where it happened then, last night. That's right. The two thugs I told you about were obviously ransacking the place, looking for valuables. But, apart from the policemen in here, you wouldn't know anything had happened. There's no sign of a disturbance. No, you're right about that, actually. In fact, if anyone, it's the police who seem to be the ones doing the ransacking. I know what you mean. They're like a gang of organized criminals all dressed in black. Oi, I heard that. Oh, Inspector, uh, good morning. <laughs> I suppose I ought to thank you for your vigilance last night. We got to the scene before it was disturbed, at least. Shame you let the two rogues get away, mind. Yes, I'm sorry about that. I thought you'd assign extra men to the beat around here, Gregsy. Now look what's happened. Hurley's been injured because there weren't enough police on duty. Ah. Uh, your ladyship. You were told me you were coming. I expect you to take full responsibility for what happened to Hurley and see he has the very best medical care. Of course, your ladyship. The very best doctors in the capital are tending to him as we speak. And I don't think it's Reno's fault that the rogues managed to get away, is it? Chasing criminals is the police's job. Uh, absolutely, your ladyship. As you ma as you say, ma'am. As you say. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's completely wrapped around her little finger. The gent in black is totally blameless. Everyone's in agreement about that. Would you believe it? He's like a completely different person with Iris. Talk about a personality change. Oh, where are me manners? Are, are you thirsty, your ladyship? Uh, perhaps you'd like some juice. Uh, some nice, refreshing fruit juice. Oh, why? Are you thirsty, Gregsy? I have some of my special herbal tea with me if you'd like some. <laughs> ah, lovely. Ta, very much. That really hit the spot, your ladyship. I don't even recognize him like this. <laughs> so, how is the investigation going, Inspector? Nothing to it, really. Very simple case, this. There's some very definitive evidence. 
We're just about to charge the dive, that diver we arrested last night, in fact. Gina, you're, you're going to charge her? That's right. Should be able to bring her before the judge at the Bailey tomorrow. Definitive evidence, you say? What is it? Come on, share me. Your ladyship, as, as much as I wish I could oblige you, I'm afraid. <laughs> she already sees, doesn't she? Ah, I see. You've already captured the pair of thugs who broke in here last night, haven't you? What the? And you're going to put them on the stand as witnesses, are you? How? How could you? How? How could you possibly know that? I had a feeling, that's all. Remind me to never try to keep a secret from Iris. So this is what she meant by she can just see some people are lying before they even talk. So if you arrest... Pa, pa, pa. So you've arrested the two men who shot Mr. Sherms, have you? Well, yes, they were rounded up pretty quickly by the lads on the beat. And Miss Lestrade is being held at the prison. She should be. That's assuming she hasn't lifted the key from the jailer, of course. Can you tell us anything about Mr. Sholmes? What's his condition? Sorry, I'm, at, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Scotland Yard matters are strictly confidential. Well, I know he's being operated on at St. Sinners. Why can't I see him? I'm family, you know. I, I'm terribly sorry, your ladyship. It's the hospital's policy. No visiting at all. Oh! The bullet must have hit an artery in his midriff. He's lost a fair bit of blood. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, no. You didn't seem too bad in the first hour or so. But a hemorrhage like that is enough to make even the one and only Sholmes pipe down. Mr. Sholmes is a human like the rest of us, you know. Well, anyway, he's having emergency surgery right now. They've got to stop that bleeding. But... He will be all right, won't he? They'll be able to make him better. Of, of, of course, your ladyship. He'll be as right as rain before you know it. <laughs> really? How do you know? Uh, uh, how do I know? Well, uh, um, because... Uh, of course. Ah, yes, because Mr. Sholmes is such a great detective, that's why. We'd better pray the doctors have a better grasp for what's needed to make someone well again. Oh dear, please don't die early. I'll report to your ladyship the moment I hear he's out of the operating theatre. Um, I couldn't help noticing, Inspector. What? Out with it, sunshine. Well, there seems to be a marked difference between the way you talk to me and Iris. Watch the sauce, Sonny. I'm a copper and we don't go in for favoritism. But he's right. You do treat us differently. It's because of those adventures of Herlock Sholmes stories, that's why. Oh. I crop up in him, don't I? Inspector Tobias Gregson. Oh, well, yes, because you're an acquaintance of Hurley's. What did you write about the inspector, Iris? Mm, I don't remember, really. It was one of Sholmes' lines. Gregson is the smartest of the Scotland Yarders, is how he put it. Oh, did I write that? And you know what that one line did for me, eh? The very next month, my pay doubled! Doubled, I tell you. Oh, that's amazing. All because everyone at the Yard reads them. They read all the Herlock Sholmes' stories. They've even set up a fan club for me. Of course. That explains everything. It was around that time when you, when you became such a toady to me. Can you blame me? All it takes is one bad word from you when Sholmes could change his tune for, about me. Gregson? No, the great detective will say. He's getting quite overrated these days. Think what would happen to my salary if that came out to print, eh? The whole thing gave, gives me the willies. 
can't really tell you how many nights of sleep I've lost to worrying about it. Well, that would never happen, Gregsy. Every month when the new Rans magazine comes out, my hands are trembling as I turn the pages. Oh, how awful for you. Yeah, have some of my tea to settle your nerves. This is the second time he's drank her tea. <laughs> ah, lovely. Ta, very much. That really hit the spot, your ladyship. Tea total. Oh, yeah. There's something I was supposed to talk to you about, actually, Mr. Nohodo. Y yes? What is it? I've got an important message for you. I clean forgot about it until now. An important message? I wonder what it could be. Are you going to tell me what this important message is then, Inspector? Yeah, it's about that young lady who's normally by your side, your assistant. Dear Susie, is she alright? She's at the station. Oh, she's at the station, isn't she? Being questioned, I believe. No, not anymore. She had to head off. Head off? Where? To Lord Strongheart's office, of course. He summoned her. Ah. Yes, of course. I'd forgotten about that. One of the whipstocks took her there. Took her there in a yard carriage after we'd finished questioning her. But she asked us to tell you she didn't have the fare for the return journey to go and meet her there. She's got a nerve using Scotland Yard as a blooming messaging service. I see. Well, thank you for passing that on, Inspector. Why did Susie have to go see the Lord Chief Justice? She... didn't tell me. But I'd better head over to the Lord Chief Justice's office to fetch her straight away. Okay, well, I guess... Shomes is still in surgery. We're going to leave it here. Um, and we'll continue next week. Okay, and so I believe the next stream, the next time I'm streaming is tomorrow. Which will be more Witcher because I still have that one DLC to go through. Let's see, is anybody streaming right now that I follow? Do -do. Mm, yeah, there's Gloomy. Gloomy has him. Oh, you know what? I haven't... Oh my god, thank you for the boot. Let's see. Just double checking I'm not coming in at an awkward time. I don't think so. Alright, I'm gonna start the raid. Oh no, am I gonna get kicked? <laughs> <coughs> but yes, thank you guys for coming by. This has been fun. I can't, I think the highlight uh, this stream was learning that that woman in the photograph is actually Herlock Sholmes. Like, I cannot believe it's actually him. It's so funny. And this entire time, I thought it was like some lover he didn't want to talk about. But it's actually himself? Oh my god. Uh -huh. I can't believe it. Oh. Anyways. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day or evening. I think the dogs are getting restless and so I need to feed them soon. I'll see you next time. Tomorrow, if you happen to catch me then or otherwise, whenever I see you. Um, and yes, bye-bye. Have a good day.